Well, footy season truly is just around the corner when intra-clubs really get hot, and that's what we've got set here at Arden Street Oval today. North Melbourne going through their biggest intra-club yet ahead of match simulation and then a community series clash and then round one. We can't wait to bring it to you right here on the NMFC website. We're here at Arden Street Oval live and looking forward to seeing the blue team, which will be made up predominantly of the best AFL uh, players that are available at the moment, and then uh, the yellow team as well, which has probably half of the uh, the AFL list, and then uh, VFL and top-up players from that. My name is Ben Waterworth. I'm looking forward to bringing you all the action over the next couple of hours here from Arden Street Oval, the blue team and the yellow team. The structure of this intra-club game, it'll be four by 25 minute quarters. We'll have, I've got team lists for the blue team and the yellow team for the first quarter. But from what I understand, players will be swapping all over the place after, basically after quarter time. So it'll keep us certainly on our toes here this after, this morning rather. Just from the outset as well, there are a lot of top-up players for the yellow team that don't have numbers. I've tried my best to uh, identify them as we go, but hopefully I understand that uh, I won't probably be able to get uh, all the, the yellow players uh, straight away. So I'll be looking forward to be joined by a couple of the North Melbourne players that won't be playing in today's game in the, the back half of, uh, of our broadcast here on the North Melbourne website, Hugh Greenwood, obviously a, uh, a, a, a you could almost call a veteran now in the, in the AFL, and of course the uh, the star co-captain Luke McDonald. Both of those players will be joining me a little bit later on. But basically, what you're going to see is uh, the the best available players uh, in the blue team all lining up in the uh, in the blue and white, and then uh, you'll obviously have. Players trying to yeah, sneak into that, uh, into that top team uh, in the yellow team in particular. So, for instance, right in the middle now, you can see Luke Davies Uniac, the number nine of the blue team, and Will Phillips is on his uh, number 29 for the yellow team. So, we're all set for a start here at the North Melbourne Intra Club Clash. It'll be Tristan Sherry who's wearing the helmet. He's going to go up against Finbar Maley, who was uh, the number two pick in the rookie draft last year. And, Bailey immediately able to get the clearance and get the yellow team off and going. That's Riley Hardiman who's sort of streaming off the halfback flank and is brought down. Hardiman, one of five first round draft picks taken by the Kangaroos in last year's national draft. A dashing defender from Western Australia, certainly one to keep an eye on. Sherry just plucks it out of the ruck and sends it inside 50 for the blue team. Ricky Nguyen is tracking it back. Coleman Jones is there for the blue team as well. Coleman Jones starting forward. Nick Larkey starting at full forward for the blue team. He's being opposed by Will Dawson, 201 centimetre defender recruit, playing in defence today. But I saw him play for Gippsland Power last year. He could literally play in any third of the ground. Very impressive prospect. Sherry decisively down to Lazaro, to Powell to Tucker. We'll via hand to Lazaro again, who's hot, and finally it comes to the Sid Barker medalist, Harry Sheasel. Inside 50, Coleman Jones coming out, couldn't quite pluck it cleanly. Leanit was there, he's one of the VFL players, but Davies Uniac pounces on the ball and snaps the first goal of the game. And it is good to see Luke Davies Uniac fit and firing just ahead of the 2024 AFL season. He missed nine games last season due to injury, but still finished fourth in the best and fairest count and was uh, averaging the 27 disposals and seven clearances. And the, the scary thing, I, I suppose, for the, the competition, Luke Davies Unak is still only 24 years of age and you sense his best footy is still in front of him. Very, very exciting prospect for North Melbourne ahead of 2024. So he gets the first goal of the game. Being opposed to Will Phillips. I mentioned Charlie Lazaro just beforehand, the number 35 on the, on the blue team. 
There is a lot of hype and buzz about Charlie Lazaro around the club after his excellent summer, which was uh, really kick-started. He's attacking the ball here and almost winning the hard ball. Instead, it went to Phillips. But Lazaro, an excellent finish to 2023. He's carried that form in the summer. There's a pluck mark there by Pink. Speak, speak about him throughout the game as well. Some nice run here from the Roos through the wing, the blue team that is. Lazaro got the kick up towards Larky, but it was thumped away there by Dawson. That's Will Dawson. I mentioned him beforehand. He's got the matchup on the reigning All-Australian in uh, Nick Larky coming off just a lazy 71 goals in a career best 2023 campaign. Sherry got it down, putting his head over the ball there with Liam Shields. Play with just a fair few games under his belt, 271 to be precise. Lee Rookie, he's got such an important role to play with his young North Melbourne list this season. So the yellow team working the ball through the middle. Big tackle applied there by Charlie Combin. And that will be balled up. A lot of hype about Charlie Combin as well. Obviously had his a luckless run with injury over the past few seasons. But uh, after a move in a defence and, and a strong pre-season, he's looking lively. Long kick inside 50 here from Harvey, but it's been chopped off a second intercept mark there for Pink. His kick just lingered in the air a bit too long and probably on the fifth bite there, Curtis Taylor has taken a nice mark. Like the 16 games last year at AFL level. Side 50, Cooper Harvey pounces and snaps the goal. That was lovely. Cooper Harvey, the 2022 draftee, snaps the yellow team's first goal of the game. Everyone knows he is the son of Boomer Harvey, the AFL, VFL games record holder. And starting to make his own name in the AFL system, Cooper Harvey. He played 13 VFL games last year and 21 goals, which then led to some late exposure at AFL level in 2023. He played the three games and kicked a very memorable first goal. So you can see the number six there for the blue team, George Wardlaw. Been eased through the preseason, but when he's been unleashed, it's been mightily exciting for Roos fans. Simpkin streaming through, handballs to Davies Uniac, and a long left foot kick inside 50. Allowed to be thumped away there by the, uh, the yellow team. Comes back to Jared Leonard, who just hacks it towards the wing position. Taylor waiting to pounce. In the end, that's uh, Phillips on the outside. Link up here from the yellow team, and the kick has been marked inside forward 50. The yellow team who uh, have been able to just to get a little bit more forward territory dominance in the past uh, couple of minutes. As I mentioned, the yellow team made up of VFL listed players, VFL listed returning players from last season and a couple of signings as well as uh, AFL listed players. So the yellow team have a couple of goals to start this contest. At two straight 12, the blue team one straight six. So a couple other players to keep an eye out for Today, from a, a blue team perspective, I'm looking forward to seeing how looks of Colby McKercher, Zane Dursma fare, the two top draftees from last year's draft, how they fare as they try and push for early debuts. Well, the, the, the word is that Colby McKercher is next door to a lock to play in, uh, in round one, but he's favoured to, to play it over the, over the next couple of weeks as well. See how the draftees go. Zane Dersmer at the moment currently on a half forward flank for the blue team. Sherry down to Davies Uniac who just slips the tackle. And Simpkin arch the back and got a hand pass to Sherry. He's run forward here, the ruck. Gave the don't argue. Then handball back to Simpkin. Showed some nice class. 
And the kick has been chopped off in the end. It was Liam Shields who was able to intercept. Here's Lawson. This is Sammy Lawson from the uh, North Melbourne VFL team there. Being goal kicker last year was a big sign to get him across. Yeah, another good defensive play from Pink. He's had three strong defensive plays to start this contest. He's a terrific story. They're able to switch the ball. The blue team. Tucker to Drury. Rookie pick from a couple of years ago and was able to play four games last season. He's pink getting involved again. Come on, Des, come on, come on. Callan Dawson, now Bergman, his first touch of the ball. Sidestep. He's hoping for Dylan Stevens, but it's something away from him. Because Dylan Stevens, the number 15 in the blue team today. Looking forward to seeing how he fares in his first season as a Roo after a good stint at the Sydney Swans. Davies Uniac has been hot early. A high kick. Zerha at the back. Coleman Jones in front. It all comes to ground now. New one involved in that link-up play. Yellow team switch it out. Kick was hoping for Harvey. He did a nice job to trap the ball and feed a teammate in. That's a wonderful tackle applied there by Gota. Won't be rewarded, but a perfectly executed tackle to force a stoppage. About 60 metres out from the blue team's goal. They trail by six. Sherry again grabbed that out of the ruck. Simkin lively early. Lazaro feeds the footy out. Lean and Shields, the two veterans combined. Again, a great trap from Harvey. Then went with a daisy cutter along the ground. And it's all blue team at the back, although Sheasel's got a bit of an issue. And he's tackled out of bounds, ultimately, in the end by Sammy Lawson. As I mentioned, big move from Coburg to the North Melbourne VFL side last season. And he ended up with... Uh, 30 plus goals to be North Melbourne's leading goal kicker. Sherry just got a handball away in that ruck contest. And Lazaro is going to be pinged for holding the ball. No waste, no time. Inside 50. Cal Dawson though, able to get the defensive fist away. Bergman tracking it to Stevens, who won his natural left side. Gets his natural left side and finds Sheasel. Got the accommodating bounce and the smooth moving yeah, Sheasel. Finds Bergman who kept on running along this broadcast wing here. He's only 21 years of age, Miller Bergman. Been turned over. Here's an opportunity for Maley. Switches on. He comes off. Louis Butler out there who goes inside 50. Spills to Phillips. Got the handball back. Deep kick inside, 50. It's Sellers who might be getting a free kick here for too high. And he can go back and have a look at the goals. So after Davies Uniac was able to kick the first goal of the game for the blue team. Yellow can make it three on the trot here. That's just off to the right. Through for a behind. Tyler Sellers was the uh, second in North Melbourne's VFL best and fairest after kicking 30 goals. 17, really strong 2023 BFL campaign. Big fly over the top from Maley. Ball trickles out of bounds. Other players to watch for the, uh, the, the North Melbourne blue team today. Jade Stevenson coming on and off the bench early. But uh, 
a really impressive season from him last year. 26 goals from, from 21 games. His second best return since that uh, famous Rising Star campaign in, in 2018 for the Pies. Tucker's been lively early, particularly around the ball. He cops a high tackle there, so he can repel for the blue team. He's hoping for Drury, but two yellow team players waiting there to fist the ball out of bounds. So just repeating, four by 25-minute quarters today at Arden Street Oval. Nice splattering of fans right across the ground watching on Melbourne trying to work their way up the ladder. It's been a, a big key out of the uh, the pre-season. Certainly media commitments has been this determination to not be at the bottom of the ladder for too much longer. Jai Simkin, Cam Zerha, Nick Larky all really driving that narrative in, the, in their respective media appearances. So the yellow team go back to go forwards here. This came in, but it was Shields who was able to kick it inside. 50, Lawson from behind, got hands to the ball. Here's McKercher. Good composure on display, but also good pressure from the yellow team. Also misdirected handball. Pink again, very impressive. Just got the, the clever tap through, then follows up with a tackle. And there's McKercher. Wrapping up Lawson, forcing the stoppage. Not only the, the best prospect to come from Tasmania last year, Colin McKercher, but arguably the best pure midfielder in last year's draft class. He has started his uh, AFL stint as a defender, just like uh, Harry Sheasel did last year. That's a superb kick. And uh, the mark has been taken directly in front of goal for the yellow team with the last three scoring shots of the game. So Luke Davies Uniac was able to kick first for the blue team. So about 45 metres to cover. And directly in front. We'll go right to the line. Sherry though is waiting and uh, is able to take the intercept mark on the last line of defence. Wearing the, the helmet after recent facial surgery. Now here's McKercher. That dashing Go. speed off halfback. And how about that for a precision left foot kick? That's a really impressive piece of play from Colby McKercher. Larky marks. Waste no time. Inside 50. Dersmer up high. Couldn't keep his feet. But Coleman Jones was waiting down low and kicks the goal. No, it's an intra club. But that is pretty impressive from North Melbourne end to end. Sherry taking the mark on the last line of the fence. Bringing McKercher into the game. That's what they call a, a 70 metre player. Runs for 20 or more and kicks at 50 plus. Larky. Dersma, Coleman Jones all involved and Coleman Jones kicks his first of the day and the blue team's second. By the nine AFL games last year, Callum Coleman Jones had a pretty good run at uh, senior level during the, the middle part of 2023 after joining the Kangaroos via Richmond. Played the 19 games with the Tigers before being traded to the Kangaroos. Sherry and Maley again go at it. Wardlaw, quintessentially at the, the fall of the ball. That's where we'll find him not only this year, but you sense for many years to come. Here he is winning the clearance, doing what he does best. Out to Davies Uniac. That combination could be lethal. Coleman Jones up high and crashed in to his teammate Larkey. Stevenson pounced, did the team thing. Well played, Jaden Stevenson. And will set up an opportunity for Blake Drury. Both players, Coleman Jones and Larkey, Straight back to their feet as well after colliding. And Stevenson, as I mentioned, looking to bring a teammate into the game. And that teammate will be Blake Drury. Such an impressive draft year back in 2022, Blake Drury, for not only the Oakley Chargers, but also for Vic Metro, was one of their best players. And now his second season at the Kangaroos. He's just off to the right, and that's through for a, uh, a minor score. So here's Biggie Nguyen, who will have the kick-out duties. You can basically 
argue that Nuon and Combin could be fighting for a uh, the, the one spot in North's round one team of the two, two key defenders. Combin starting the game in the blue team, which is the, the stronger team on paper. But, uh, Nuon, his summer has been excellent since he was joined the Kangaroos via Richmond. Davies Uniac getting his hands on the ball. Hitting Bergman. Now Callum Dawson goes all the way back to Stevens. Kicks smothered off the boot. Powell looking to arrive and did well to slip the tackle initially. It's Combin who's kept the ball going. McKercher handballs the ball forward. Wardlaw stands up in the tackle. Goes back to Davies Uniac. Back to Combin. He looks for an out kick here and he's got one in McKercher. McKercher again taking territory. Long kick, hoping for Larky. Ball comes to ground, it's pounced on by Lazaro. He had Larky by a hand, but he goes longer to Stevenson. Who's tucked up in the pocket here at Arden Street. Oh, son, higher than with, uh, obviously being up at 10 o'clock now, but he's uh, still sort of looking into it a little bit. This is a mightily tough kick for a natural right footer. We know he's got mercurial skills, though, Jaden Stevenson, the 25 year old. On the edge of the paint and the boundary line, he kicks it to the top of the goal square. Big fly there from Larky. Crumb by Drury down to Coleman Jones, looking for a second crumb goal. Drury just a little slow to get to his feet there. He's down behind the play. Keep your eyes on that. In the meantime, the ball heads towards the wing. Pink again with another intercept. Finds the Kirch is starting to get some rhythm in this game. Davies Uniac caught a couple of mines. Spears at the Stevens. There's new one behind him. And now it's a, a pretty congested forward area. Just pops it towards the hot spot. Larky in front. That was a perfect kick from Stevenson. So twice now Stevenson has pulled off a, a lovely kick to set up a set shot attempt for a teammate. It's a good start to the game for Jaden Stevenson. You have got a really good look at this on our cameras behind the reigning leading goal kicker for the, the Kangaroos, but Larky is off to the left. That attempt. What a 2023 campaign it was for Nick Larky. As I mentioned, 71 goals, five times he kicked five or more goals in a match. And he's second in the best and fairest behind Harry Sheasel. And obviously the maiden All-Australian Guernsey. New on. Thumps it towards the wing. It's a well-weighted kick. Cal Dawson did his best to try and intercept, but the just had too much penetration on it in the end. So they're just using one. So the line's the kick. So yellow team working the ball along the wing. This is Maley, Finbar Maley. Pluck from the, the Northern Bull Ants in, in the VFL. And gosh, he's kicked that like a midfield in the ruck. That's just an excellent kick inside 50. Speared it, lace out to Cooper Harvey. And he marks with a, uh, on a 45 degree angle, about 45 metres to cover. Who's on the far side, Tucky? Already kicked one goal so far today for Harvey. I'm going to make it two. I made it dance a little to the lateral. It's through for a minus score. Kircher again involved from the kick out. Well weighted, so uh, up high. And there's, there's Drury, so good to see him back to his feet. Just a little slow to uh, get to his feet after the collision inside forward 50, but he's up and running now, no concerns. He sits. And we throw in pretty close to true centre wing here at Arden Street Oval. It's been into a lovely day. It's pouring with rain late yesterday and early this morning, but the sun is out. Perfect conditions. With this kind of hit out. A little hand pass from Hardeman. Heads up a, a 
couple of the VFL players of, of the yellow team. Oh, big don't argue. <laughs> Occasion came from Goda. He's looked tough in the, uh, in the clinches at a, a couple of times today. Bergman on the left, turned over. Thank you. 2-2-14 apiece here at Arden Street Oval. It's under six minutes remaining in this first quarter. Just a reminder, we're going to be joined by uh, Hugh Greenwood and Luke McDonald in the next couple of quarters as well. So that. Sheasel and Simpkin combined here. Last couple of uh, Sid Barker medalists. And Davies Jr. Yep. gets free. And Zerha is also free inside 50. And they've got plenty of options inside 50 here. The blue team. Why not go to the big Suv? Larky Marks. And unselfishly gives it to Dersma. And the pick four from 2023 kicks the goal. Again, nice play off the turnover from the back half of the ground. North Melbourne. And it leads to a goal to Zane Dersma. Only 18 years of age, 190 centimetres. I spoke to him last year at the National Draft Combine. He is a very, very impressive young man and how he carries himself and an outstanding footballer. Speaking to a couple of recruiters throughout last year, he said that Dersma could be one of the... His natural talent is off the charts. And, uh, no surprise to see him go up. Picked four last season. He told uh, reporters a little earlier this month that the, the plan is for him to play mainly forward this year. He had a, a mighty talent lead campaign for the... Uh, Gippsland Power last year, he kicked 33 goals. He's a very exciting prospect. For Kangaroos fans, one of a, a number of first round prospects now on this list as part of this lengthy North Melbourne rebuild that the, the playing group is so keen to flip the script on as soon as possible. As I mentioned, been a key theme publicly for the Kangaroos so far this summer. Great forward pressure there from Larky, wins a free kick for holding the ball. Cover the ground really well. Nick Larkey started this game. Inside 50. New on though. Tracking back. Able to take the intercept mark. Linking up with Hardeman. Natural left footer. This time goes via hand. Playing's a high half back today, Hardeman. Taylor going back with the flight, but Goda was there to apply the defensive fist, but he was doing some holding of his opponent. He gives away the free kick. Beautiful kick here to Phillips. Started the game well. Will Phillips. He congested up ahead a lot of blue team jumpers clocking up the their defensive 50. So new on involved in that switch and some run on the outer side here for the yellow team and Lawson is able to take the mark. The switch paying dividends there for the yellow team. And Lawson will have a look at the goals here. His second attempt after picking a behind earlier. He's been on AFL clubs' radar for a number of years, Sam Lawson, particularly around mid season draft time. He's been Discussed amongst recruiting circles. Keeps it low as Lawson and keeps it to the left. And Sherry again is there to thwart the score. This time it's through for a minor. So she's with the kick out duties. Short to Combin. He goes short to McKercher. So look at McKercher Conjure here. He goes with the the kick through the middle, one way to run the pink. Pink has slotted into this North Melbourne back line with a plot. He sense he's going to have a, a big say in how this Kangaroos defence fares. Well, way to kick here to Stevenson. Kick smothered off the boots, so that won't be a mark to Colin Jones. He has to play on immediately. Dribbles it around the corner inside 50. Sinkin just over around the ball. Shields to. Will Dawson, whose handball has set a task here for Hardeman. Now comes out to Zerha, who slips the tackle. 
Zane Dersma. But his goal sense is. Didn't quite have enough juice on the kick. Followed up his own work with the spoil. Got it to Zerha. Can he pull off something miraculous here? Stevenson might. Well, he does the team thing again, Jaden Stevenson. This time, it doesn't come off. Cooper Harvey with his way all the way back in an offence. And it is going to be a 50-metre penalty here. Yeah, Davies Uniac. Oh, he played on there, so that's going to be... An opportunity here for the yellow team to pounce. Retreats to Sheasel and Bergman, and Sheasel again linking up via hand. And a well weighted pass to Combin. Larkless run with his body, Charlie Combin, in the AFL system. In a really strong pre season. And looks to really have settled on, on an offensive role. As is this man, Sheasel. Sherry all by himself in the middle of the ground. and can set up a, a look at the goals here for Lazaro, who passes it off instead to Zerha. Zerha marks almost directly in front. And it might have the last shot at goal for this opening quarter. 20 goals from 16 games last season. Cameron Zerha missed a, missed a fair bit of footy due to an ankle injury. Big year for Zerha. To contribute towards the team's success. That kick looks pretty straight off the boot. That's through for Zerha's first goal of the game and the blue team's fourth. They're 4 2 26 and the yellow team 2 3 15 with 26 seconds remaining. Be a, a heavily discussed player externally, you'd think uh, Cameron Zerha, agent at the end of the year, but. We heard him speak with, with passion about how much he loves the playing group in, uh, in the past couple of weeks as well when he uh, fronted reporters. He's just keen to let his footy do the talking at the moment. Should he be there round one? It'll be his 100th AFL game as well. Has 133 goals to his name. The final few seconds of this quarter. Sherry down to Powell. Having some time in the centre bounce. Kicks out towards half forward. Dersmer and Lenit going at it there. Lenit comes away with it for the yellow team. And the yellow team might have a, a pop of the goals before quarter time, although Davies Uniac has something to say about that. <laughs> it really looks like Luke Davies Uniac at times that quarter was in cruise control. He's motoring. And that's quarter time here at Arden Street Oval of this intra-club game here on the North Melbourne website. It's North Melbourne 4-2-26, the blue team. 4-2-26, rather. Yellow team 2-3-15. We'll take a short break, come back with the second quarter action, hopefully have here from a North Melbourne player watching off on the sidelines. He'll hopefully join us pretty soon up here in our commentary area. A drive that's on an entirely new level. So you can get more out of every moment. All hybrid Mazda CX-60. Elevate your world. At North Melbourne, we're bound by our heritage. Celebrating 25 years since 1999, we're building towards our next piece of silverware. We're bound by the shin bone of spirit. Tried to shake and bake. Zerha just gets rid of a man. To never take a backward step. LDU, the kangaroos have stunned. We're bound 
by heartbreak. Bound to bounce back once more. We're bound by grit and grind. To make every second count. We're bound by our community. To make a difference where it matters most. We're bound by our family. Bound to leave our own legacy. Now, Sid Barker medalist, Harry Sheezer. We're bound by the promise of the future. Bound to be greater than before. Sheezer! We're bound by the rule. To give everything to you. We're bound together.
Welcome back here to Arden Street Oval on the streaming here on the North Melbourne Footy Club website. Great to have your company wherever you're watching. We're seeing an intra-club clash between the available Kangaroos players. We've got a blue team and a yellow team, four by 25 minute quarters. There's been some swapping of jumpers at quarter time just to make things a little bit more interesting. For instance, Biggie Nuon, who started in the yellow team, he's now in the, in the blue team. And Toby Pink, who started so well for the blue team, he's now in the yellow team. So they haven't had to change ends, basically, is what's happened. Colby McKercher, though, is still in the blue team and picks up from where he left off and gets his first kick of the quarter. And now Stevenson goes high inside 50. Pink dropping back. Zerha there waiting to pounce and bounces it through for his second goal of the game. He's got the last two of this contest, Cam Zerha. And the blue team go on to 5 2 32, yellow 2 3 15. So, as I mentioned, Four by 25 uh, minute quarters. And uh, the goal kickers so far two to Cam Zerha, one to Callum Coleman Jones, and late Luke Davies, Unak, and Zane Dersma. And then we've got one to Cooper Harvey, and Kay Delarue was the other one. Ben Waterworth, my name, bringing you this uh, intra club contest. And as, a, as I mentioned beforehand, we're uh, great to have rotating through uh, this intra-club today. A couple of players not out there who'd love to be out there trying to get uh, those last few Ks in before uh, round one. But great to be joined by the co-captain, a guy who just bleeds blue and white, Luke McDonald, and he's been good enough to join us in the commentary box. Luke, welcome. You're a bit sort of, I suppose, disappointed you're not out there today on a, on a cracking day to play footy. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. Um, but, yeah, obviously I'd love to be out there, but um, not too far away, so... You do get a bit of FOMO when the games start yeah. coming around, but it's a very long year, so um, yeah, but it's been some exciting signs so far. Cooper Harvey kick, just kicked his uh, second goal as well. He's been one of the uh, exciting signs, Cooper, in, in uh, season number two. What have you witnessed about his uh, pre-season so far? Yeah, he's um, dropped a bit of weight and he's moving really well. And I mean, he's never um, lacked an ability to kick a goal. That's, that's <laughs> what he does. He just kicks goals at every level he plays at. So... Um, yeah, I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> might, might, might have been his old man. But, he, uh, yeah, he's, he's got some serious X Factor, Coop. So, um, yeah, always love seeing a father-son going well. So in terms of an, of an intra-club hit out like this, so we're uh, a week away from uh, a match simulation against the Pies and then there's another nine days or so before you play the Saints in a, uh, in a community series game. What's the, the a, a couple of overarching goals that Alistair Clark and, and the coaching staff and as a playing group, what do you want to achieve out of, a, of an event like this today? Um, oh, well, for starters, it's just um, just getting getting used to playing games and, yep. and um, not even just playing the game itself, but the preparation, um, preparing all week. Um, this is probably the first week that the whole training has been drilled about, um, about being ready and being fresh for the game. Um, but, yeah, obviously there's a lot of things that we've um, changed in how we play and guys are playing different roles. And, um, yeah, I mean, they've, they've, there's been a fair bit of match sim, but um, I suppose this is the, the final one, final sort of hit out before we play some genuine opposition and really excited to play the Pies, who are obviously the benchmark of the competition. You mentioned a couple of uh, role changes in particular. We've seen Charlie Common basically since the start of the preseason as well move more permanently into... A defensive role. He's got finally a, a good run with, uh, with with his body as well. Touchwood. Uh, what have you? What have you? What's impressed you about his uh, summer so far? 
Uh, oh yeah, well he's, he's got a lot of attributes which suit a key defender in, in his aggression and um, so he's marked that on cue. Almost. Um, but yeah, and his ability to read the ball in, in flight, um, especially with Griff Logue sort of missing the first half of the year and, and Benny Mackay leaving. Um, it's probably a bit of a hole there, which is why we brought in Pinky and, and Biggie as well. Um, but yeah, we just thought he's got some really good attributes and um, yeah, he's had a bit of a frustrating run for the majority of his career so far, but um, he's had a good run this pre-season and hopefully that's going to set him up for a really good year. Yeah, Robert Hansen Jr. involved there. He's just off to the right, the mid-season draftee from last year. You mentioned the, the outs, for, certainly for the start of the season in terms of Griffin Logan and Ben now at Essendon. But you bring, like, Toby Pink was very, very impressive in that first quarter and it, it's, that's been a theme throughout the summer is that he's had an excellent pre-season campaign and could potentially make an impact. Will Dawson's got the ball now. He's 201 centimetres. Doesn't turn 19 until December. Yeah. Right, so it's Despite a couple of big names not being there at the start, big and on marks on cue as well, you've got some key defensive depth there. Yeah, absolutely. And um, although it's probably been frustrating, especially like me and um, Aiden Corr not being out there, it's been an awesome opportunity for some younger uh, key defenders to really step up and fill that void. And it's probably meant um, that all those guys you mentioned and, and Callum Dawson as well have, have really stepped up and, um, and they're, yeah, they're ready to play AFL footy. So... Um, yeah, we've, got, we've certainly got a lot of depth in the position. Um, Dorse, as a young fella, yeah, as you said, he's only 18, but he's been playing on Lark so far. It's a great yeah. opportunity for him uh, to learn. But, yeah, some of the stuff he's been able to do as well has been really impressive for a young fella. Um, obviously, high draft pick, but, um, yeah, he's just... Yeah, he's, he's already filling out his body really well, so I think he's going to be a good player for a long period of time. Zerhar again involved, kicks towards the top of the goal square. Lazaro to Larky, who just fumbled momentarily, has support on the outside. I reckon that's Tyler Sellers who's got the ball, and he has been able to snap on the left foot and kick a goal. So Sellers able to kick his first of the game. As I mentioned before, Henry, 30 goals, 17 for North Melbourne's VFL side last year and was second in, in the best and fairest. Tim and Sam Lawson were a bit of a handful for rival uh, position uh, teams in the VFL last season. But a good opportunity for a, a lot of these young guys and, and VFL listed players, Luke, to, to have a, a good hit out against the, the blue team, which is which is clearly the, the stronger team on paper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Lynch has started to create a really strong program down there. Um, a lot of the VFL boys have done a lot of sessions with us over the the summer and uh, built some really strong rapport. Um, yeah, speaking of Tyler Sellers, um, he's yeah he's he can seriously play. Yeah. And Samuel Lawson, as you mentioned, are really really good players. Um, and yeah, they're they're fitting really well over the over the preseason training with us. So um, yeah, I mean that's as you would have seen that first quarter. The Blues just didn't get it all their own way. Yeah. The, the yellows really challenged us. So it's been um, it's been good. That's why the standard in training has um, increased a lot. This is Bergman who's been able to intercept Mark. Seen him and Sheasel and McCurch give plenty of runoff halfback. Here's Drury providing some dash as well. He's tucked up on the wing and centres it. Just miscues the kick. So as I mentioned beforehand, players have swapped teams. So Callum Coleman Jones is one of those players who's swapped teams. This kick was hoping for Will Dawson and that one trickles out of bounds. So you personally, Luke, uh, where are you? Where are you placed at, uh, ahead of round one, and what, and what are your goals over the next uh, two to three weeks, to, and boxes to tick, I suppose? Um, oh yeah, well my hammy's yeah fully recovered now, so yep. um, I probably could have played today, but I'm in um, like a really heavy training phase, just getting um, as many Ks in the leg to set myself up for uh, a big year. As I said, obviously would have loved to be out there today, but I had a big session with a um, few of the boys last last uh, yesterday when we got home from the community camp, and yep. then go again Friday. So. Um, yeah, obviously missed a lot of training pre-Christmas, but uh, in a really good position to uh, play at the start of the year. Good to hear. A lot of the, the players, that's the stress as well, that aren't playing today. There's a fair few not out there today, but not too many sort of in danger of, of missing round one at this stage outside of Griffin Logue, who's obviously still recovering from that uh, mid-season uh, ACL injury, rather. So hopefully uh, his recovery going nice and smoothly. There's an opportunity here for Charlie Lazaro. We talk about Hype buzz players tearing up the track, etc., etc. Luke Charlie Lazaro seems like he's fitted into that uh, into that category over the summer. Yeah, he's had a really strong preseason. Uh, 
playing a lot inside and uh, a bit half forward as well. But uh, yeah, he's just got himself really fit, really strong and really confident in his body and his preparation that he's had. So uh, yeah, hopefully he can um, step up and, and, and play a role for us. But yeah, it's just, it's just I mean, even looking over the past few years, um, just the growth in a lot of our midfielders. Yep. I mean, now to you as well, has had a really strong pre-season. Um, Jai's always training really well. He's really fit and ready to go. Um, Powley, I think the last two games, probably he's probably taken the votes. He's been really good. Will yep. Fields had a really strong summer. Georgie Wardlaw, so um, starting to build some really strong um, and exciting young talent in there. And then you put in Liam Shields as well. I've got oh, pretty handy. Years. Pretty handy. He's won three flags. So, um, yeah, there's some really good depth in there. And uh, The exciting bit about it is they're all um, coming through together. Really, really young, really close group, but really uh, competitive with each other. So, um, yeah, they're bringing the best out of each other. That's a beautiful ball movement from the blue team. Lazaro streamed through the middle of Arden Street Oval. It was set up by a, a precise kick from... And I suppose a trademark, I suppose you'd, you'd say now from Harry Sheasel, who, who hit the target. Lazaro did the, the 70 metre play, ran 20, kicked at 50, and hit Larky on the chest. Larky can have a look at the goals. He's kicked a goal so far today. And just able to squeeze that one through as the reigning leading goal kicker in all Australian. So the blue team go to 6 2 38, yellow 3 4. 22. We, we talked about McKercher and, and, and Dersma that have come in and, and Will Dawson as well. Hardiman, Taylor Goat. You, we know that you've had a lot of top picks in the, the past few years, Luke, but five first round draft picks last year. Has, has that given a, an extra sense of, I suppose, youthful enthusiasm amongst the, the playing group? You've got sort of five draftees coming and jo joining the club this off offseason? Uh, yeah, I mean. It's always good getting young um, talent and energy in. Um, I mean, yeah, it's another a, a big change in the guard, I suppose, with Cunners and Zeebs and Goldie going mm. and, and bringing those boys in. But, um, yeah, it's just really exciting. And all, all of those players have, have um, shown glimpses of what they're capable of. Um, and, and Taylor Goad um, sort of been calling him a bit of a unicorn. Yeah. He's, um, he's probably the fastest bloke on our list and he's obviously the tallest and he can jump the highest. So... Um, he's got some amazing attributes, so uh, yeah, it's it's really exciting um, having all these young guys, um, teaching him, teaching them the right habits, and um, yeah, we just feel like we're building building a really strong list and connection, and I'm really excited for the year ahead. Hanson had a look at the goals there; it was just off to the right. That's his second shot at goal in this quarter. Sheasel now marks. Right to his Stay left right he instead yeah, now, the trigger right. again to Lazaro at half back McCurcher will receive from his natural left side here composure has been on display as well as is his accurate kicking hoping for Sherry and Sherry used his body well there was in the one-on-one -on -one against Maley and the long kick inside 50 sellers is the target again Drury waiting has Larky to his left big tackle from Pink but it was an illegal wow. tackle and Drury will go back and have the set shot as well. As I mentioned, Toby Pink started in the blue team and then was moving off to the uh, the yellow team for this game. In the meantime, Drury plays on, snaps around the body and kicks his first goal of the game. And the blue team on the scoreboard starting to put a little bit of a gap between the, the blue team and, uh, and the yellow team. Luke, I suppose a, a big thing externally that we've noticed uh, across the summer is Jai Simpkin, Cam Zerha, all saying we're pretty sick of being down the bottom of the ladder. You've, you've been, I suppose, uh, one of the more experienced players on, on the list now, considering the, the likes that you mentioned beforehand who have who departed at the, at the end of last season. At the same time, you've gone from sort of fourth or fifth most experienced and old, um, uh, youngest list in the competition, rather, to the, the youngest and most inexperienced inexper in terms of games played as well. What gives you the confidence that such a young team can still try and make a bit of a jump up the ladder this year? Um, oh, just just the way we've been training, like intensity, the volume, uh, the skill level, um, yeah, the energy. It's yeah, it just feels feels like we're building really a really really strong um, list and program and. Um, I mean, 
we haven't even really spoken about our coaching staff, yeah. which has been um, obviously been a fair bit of change. But guys uh, coming from really really strong environments um, that have that have been in yeah, as I said, strong environments, been in finals footy sides, and um, yeah, teaching us really really good habits. And uh, yeah, it's just been yeah, it's just been a really really strong summer. So. Um, yeah, we just yeah. there's just a real, real good feeling, good excitement, and um, yeah, as everyone said, it's been a, a lean few years. Um, but you know, the only way to change that is actions. There's a lot of words, but we've got to put it on on the field. And um, I feel like I've been been able to do that so far this summer, and just excited to play genuine opposition. Speaking of exciting, that was George Wardlaw on display, who was able to crumb and snap the goal as well. Played the, uh, the eight games last year in 2023. 20, His glimpses were really, really exciting. Obviously, just a couple of little hamstring setbacks. And we know that during his draft year as well, a, a couple of hamstring setbacks limited his, uh, his game time. But if, if he can get his body right, he's a, a mightily exciting player. A couple of times today, Luke, we saw Wardlaw win it on the inside, feed it out to Davies Uniac on, on the outside. That's, that's, that's your midfield working beautifully there. Yeah, um, Georgie's had a really strong pre-season. Um, hasn't hasn't had any hiccups, mm. um, which is great for him because he's done a lot of work to get himself really strong over the last 18 months. And and even um, you know he, he probably hasn't played a lot of footy to be honest over the last three years. Um, so I mean, when the ball's there to be won, <laughs> it's him and someone else, and they're both one meter away. Um, I know I'm putting my money on. He's he's a genuine bull and. Um, they're the guys you love playing with. Who just uh, leave it all out there, and um, yeah, he's a he's a great kid as well. So he's he's gonna um, yeah, getting 22 games into George Wardlaw will be really exciting. Yeah. Or 23. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah God. it's gonna be, gonna be a lengthy uh, a lengthy season now. It's gonna be an opening round and gather round. Snap around the body here, bounces through for a goal for the yellow team. That is their, uh, their fourth goal of the game. Blue just getting a bit of a, a run on there. And yellow go on to 4-4-28. Blue team 9-2-56. From the, the quarter and a half that you've seen so far, Luke, who are the, the, uh, the players on the field that have kind of caught your eye uh, a, a little bit? And... Uh, yeah, that, that, that have uh, impressed you across the first quarter and a half. Um, oh well, I think Lazaro has continued his really strong preseason. Uh, she's using the ball really well. Uh, the first quarter in particular, LD just looked looked almost a class above. Yeah. He's he's got some serious ability, and we saw that last year. But another one that we just love to get a full year out because yeah, who knows what he, he can do and how yeah. how much he can take us. Um, yeah, I really, I don't really like individualising too much because there's been some really, really strong performances. So, um, I mean, any time uh, McCurchy gets a ball in his hand, something good seems yeah. to happen. So, uh, yeah, it's, nah, it's exciting. Wardlaw with the free kick and sends it long inside 50. Big flight from the side from Sellers. Empire pulling out a free kick. It's going to be a push. So, there's a bit of interference there in that marking contest. So. Tyler Sellers, who started in the yellow team and gone to the blue team, was mainly coming from the other side, just uh, interfering according to the umpire. So Sellers gone from yellow to blue at quarter time. Already kicked one goal in this quarter and can, uh, can make it a second. Almost directly in front, have about 35 to 40 metres to cover. Covers it easily. Alan Pye doesn't move. So Sellers with his second. And the blue team, their 10th goal of, uh, of the game so far. So you mentioned that the, the coaching changes as well. Heard Xavier Clark in the media a couple of, uh, couple of days ago uh, as well. You know, he was talking about how he went through the, the Richmond coaching appointment uh, process as well and got, and got pretty deep there, but it ultimately landed, landed at the ruse. And I'm sure you guys are, are pretty glad to have a... a a guy who's had had so much success at the Tigers bring that wisdom, those experiences uh, to, to Arden Street. Oh yeah, he's he's been been awesome. Ex, just a wealth of knowledge. Um, working with the forwards, so pretty young group up there too. So um, yeah, he as you said, coming from Richmond and all those premierships, it's been awesome. Just 
Chew in his ear, and as well as um, Jed as well, uh, coming from the Lions. Yeah. Um, you know, he's he's been through a very similar sort of path to us in terms of he was at the Lions for a yeah. long period of time when they had a few lean years and they played the last three or four prelims and were a kick away from winning the flag mm. last year. So um, he's came in as well and, and been awesome. And, and yeah, I mean, another year with Clarko. Uh, so, yeah, it's... Yeah, we just feel like we're in a really strong position off the field and um, got some real stability, which is um, which is just going to benefit us immensely. So here's a look here at Zane Dersma. And put this one in the book. You reckon? Yeah, put it in. No such thing as the commentator's curse of intra-club games, <laughs> so he's nice and safe here. He uh, kicked one goal earlier on in the game. As I mentioned, so impressive in his draft campaign last year. Kicked the, the 33 goals for Gippsland Power. There was... One standout game for Vic Country where he essentially turned the game against Vic Metro. That was that really caught the eye. As curse. I mentioned, no such thing <laughs> as a commentator's curse in Injury Club. It's the first time I've seen him miss. <laughs> it's a, uh, I heard him speak a, a few weeks ago that sort of his role will mainly be uh, inside uh, the forward line this year. Did show glimpses last year that he can move into the midfield and that at times for, for Gippsland Power and for big country as well but he's a good size at 190 can sort of you, man, you see, feels like he could be a real, real versatile player for you guys yeah oh absolutely and um i mean like yeah he's, he's had a great pre-season and i suppose the thing with um guys like sheasel and, and dacos they've set the bar so high for, have. for first year players yeah. but we like we want these guys playing for us for 10 15 years yep. so um there's a lot of pressure on first year boys but uh like he hasn't he hasn't put a foot wrong both None, none of the first year boys have really they've been really impressive and uh yeah obviously i haven't been able to train much but um just speaking to a few of the defenders zane's been causing a lot of headaches yeah, and, right. um, yeah he's just got a lot of class and a little bit of swagger as well which yes. we don't mind so um yeah excited to to get out there alongside him both him and mccurcher who has the ball now carry themselves superbly for, for young guys mccurcher kicks inside 50 for larky jared lean it Seen the ball over the line. Jared Lean it now on staff, I think, at the at the Kangaroos loose. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's been a development coach the last couple of years yep. and still playing uh, for our VFL side, which is which is awesome, being able to coach all the young fellas during the week and then genuinely coach them out there on the ground yeah. as well. So, uh, yeah, he's been awesome, Lino. And, yeah, just another another one of the good appointments we've had over the last couple of years. He's involved in the one-on-one uh, -on -one here with Stevenson. Wardlaw, that's brilliant. Able to feed it out to Davies Uniac. There's that combination on display again. Davies Uniac off to the left and, uh, for a minor score. But he just looks like he's, throughout this f uh, first half, he just looks like he's been in cruise control, really. He's covering the ground like a gazelle. He looks terrific at the moment, Luke Davies Uniac. I've mentioned at the top, the scary thing is Luke's only 24. Still. Yeah, he's got a lot of. Uh, he, he sends his best footy certainly in front of him. I know. Well, that's that's what I sort of said, alluding to earlier with um like Sheasel and Dacos, how well they played in their first year. A lot of people get judged so early on in their career yep. when, like, you know, his his best footy's even able to use best footy's ahead of him, and he's already been able to play some really impressive footy. So, um, yeah, able to use had a really strong preseason and. Um, yeah, just really looking forward to getting him out there for 22 games because that's going to make North Melbourne a very um, strong side. Having him in there, as you said, all the guys you've mentioned, um, yeah, it's exciting. Sheasel just fumbled, so allows an opportunity for Harvey to slam it inside. 50 is Lawson. Great pressure from Combin at the last minute just to affect the kick. And it means there's no score in the end, so big play there from Charlie Combin. That'll... A tick from the coaches, no doubt. Oh, that's just one of those traits that I you know. Speaking of, uh, with Big Chomp, just his competitiveness never gives up, um, and that's that's what you love in defender. Yeah. Well, that's what you love all over the ground, but especially when he's playing alongside you. When you're ready. 199 centimeters, Charlie Common, terrific size. As you mentioned, great size in that that back line for the Roos, despite the outs at the start of this season. Lovely handball from Dersma. Fed Stevens on that natural left boot. Hoping for Stevenson. One on one here with Lena. Great crumb from Zerha on the left. Can he squeeze it in? He can't. He's off to the right. Another one who's had a strong preseason, Zerha, as well as Dill Stevens coming from the Swannies. Um, 
I'd watched a fair bit of him at the Swans and um, yeah, could just tell he's a class operator. So to have him come and just slot straight into a wing, um, yep. he's, oh, he's running ability is as good as anyone. Uh, it's been about five years in a row where Jai Simpkins, no one's been able to get near yeah. him. Um, day one, Dill came and beat him. So that just shows just how fit uh, Dill is because Jai's in as good as Nick as I've ever seen him as well. So uh, yeah, he's going to be a, a great player for us for a long period of time. People forget he's only in his fourth year. So um, yeah, he's going to be awesome for us. Good to see Braden George having a good run as well. He took the mark before and took it out towards the wing. Yellow team. Linking up via hand here. You on court behind, couldn't quite get the, the spoil in there. Yeah, it's good seeing uh, Braden out there. He's had a really tough 18 months, but um, I think that's going to set him up for the rest of his career, just in terms of just that resilience. Like, I've never seen any young fella deal with it as well as he has. So, uh, yeah, we're really just excited to see him get a, get a run at it and get that confidence back in his body. And... Um, yeah, he's, he's been able to show some impressive signs. What, what are some of those impressive traits that you've seen in, uh, in, in tough times, uh, the resilience that he's shown? What, what sort of stood out to you around the club about Braden George? Oh, well, he, just, he never, ever doesn't have a smile on his face. Yeah, right. um, never complains. Um, and to be fair, he probably had every right to. But uh, he's just, yeah, he's just one of those guys that brings energy um, and... Yeah, just meticulous with his preparation, which, as I said, it's been tough for him, but it's going to set himself up for uh, the rest of his career because, uh, you know, it's never a linear line. The yeah. There's always ups and downs. And yeah. um, fortunately, he's had a few early days, but, yeah, they're going, to be, they're going to be really good for him moving forward. So Wardlaw Court holding the ball. So Taylor was able to win the, the free kick. Here is George. He's got a big boot on He him. does. It's onto that one. Sends it right to the top of the goal square. Again, Sherry working back late. Goda. She had some uh, great traits in and under in that first quarter in particular. He's able to clear here. Sellers clean pick up at grand level. Amble just missed the target. George again started to get involved. With the outside of the, the right boot there that was smothered by Wardlaw. Goes out of bounds. Wardlaw and George obviously taken in the, in the same draft. With uh, Harry Sheasel as well. As you look at the bench, Larky, Tucker, Combin, Dylan Stevens all yeah, having a, a rest on the pine. Too much longer left in this game, so 25 minute quarters time on. Simpkin back to Bergman. Just over the head of Wardlaw. One on one here with Taylor. Look at Wardlaw to bump Taylor off the ball and then get straight back to his feet. Feign the hand pass, swing on the left boot and hit, almost hit Drury. Almost did everything right. That's, a, that's an eyebrow raising moment from George Wardlaw. That's an excellent piece of play. The yellow team will look to retreat here across their defensive line. Good quarter as well from. Will Dawson switches it to Hardiman, who's a natural left footer. Do you arrive with the, the long locks, Hardiman, and has had a shave since? Yeah, yeah. had a little trim up. Yeah. So, um, Wasn't leadership enforced, was it? His own choice? Uh, no, his own choice. Right, okay. I think he looks good, though. Yeah. A couple of them, actually. A couple of them had shaved heads. So okay. It's interesting. Come <laughs> now! Player out of uh, WA. Very impressive rebounding defender. The left boot. Come Sellers on. again. Been on the end of a few things today here for the Kangaroos. To Drury centers it to Stevenson. Oh, he marks me. So speaking about it in the first quarter, Luke, that Stevenson and all had a couple of really nice moments where he could have had a shot at the goal, but brought a teammate into the play as well. That just sort of seems like the extra layer that Jaden added last year while also hitting the scoreboard, his ability to bring teammates into the game. Yeah, I think it's certainly um, one of Jaden's best qualities, his ability to get. Um, his teammates involved in the game. He's, his skill level is as good as any, and I think you've seen that for a long time. Mm. But um, yeah, he's just he's got that composure and, and that confidence, and um, he's been yeah hasn't missed a beat this preseason. So uh, I think he took a really big step forward last year. Had a strong year, yep. and um, yeah, I mean with the ball getting in there, uh, more giving him more opportunity this year. I reckon he can um, take another step. So he gets some scoreboard reward for effort himself there with his first goal of the game. He set up scoring opportunities for, for Zerha and Larky in that, in that first quarter. As you mentioned, strong 2023 campaign 
26 goals, which was um, his second best effort, actually, after that Rising Star season for Collingwood back in 2018. But I think, importantly, played the 21 games and was actually able to get some continuity in his body. Yeah. Oh, I spe- for all these, for a lot of these young guys, it's that continuity, like just playing 22 games, um, just puts so much confidence in, in their bodies and themselves. And um, I mean, Zerhal is another one that missed a fair chunk of last yep. year that we'd just love to get 22 games out of. Um, because, yeah, I mean, you look at you look at all the good sides and and every, you know, just having that. Having your, as many times as possible, having your best 22 out there, just set yourself up for such uh, success. And I mean, look at the Pies last year, the Lions, they've had really strong injury rates. And, and um, yeah, touch wood, that's what we'll have this year. Davies Uniac kicked inside 50. Big tackle applied there by Will Dawson. Good smother from Zerha. He's still lurking around trying to a scoring opportunity. The other team will look to work it out via hand. Towards the wing, Maley was there. Common at the back. Umpire paid it to the man in front, which was Finbar Maley, number two pick in the uh, in the rookie draft last year. Sherry obviously the will go in as uh, as the number one prospect. But what have you liked about Finbar since he's uh, since he's come to Arden Street? Luke? Yeah, he's a he's a character, Finbar. Yeah. So um, he's fit in straight away. And uh, the thing I've really been impressed with is just like his competitiveness um, and his work ethic. He, he, genu- he has a genuine want to get better um, every single day. At, and, um, yeah, he's improved immensely already this preseason. So he's been up against it, obviously going against X, who's, yep. um, yeah, really strong and in really good condition. So it's been, yeah, he's learnt so much this preseason so far, Pimbar, and he's, he's only going to get better. About two and a half minutes remaining in this, uh, in this quarter. Ball here with Durs, where he's worked his way up to the half back flank to Harry Sheasel. Saw how well the, the move to start his AFL career as a, as a half back worked out for him. Did the, the same for Colby McKercher as well, the, the natural midfielder who's shown some excellent signs as a rebounding defender for the Kangaroos in the off season. Zerhar in front was held, so he'll get the free kick. Stevenson screaming for it inside 50. Heads in that direction. Just fell, falls short of him. And Pink is able to set up a, a bit of a rebounding chain here. Harvey got a very unaccommodating bounce, but he was good enough to trap it and, and do a lovely little snap kick around the body to set the yellow team up here. He's done some excellent things today, Cooper Harvey. Hardeman through the middle. Coleman Jones from behind juggles the mark. You can have a look at the goals here. Wants to pass it off. He spears it, and ultimately there was no one back. Coleman is able to take the easy intercept mark. And Coleman Jones played the nine games last year. As I mentioned, a pretty good run at AFL level during the mid-season. But if he can provide you as that, particularly provide Tristan with that, um, you know, as that backup ruck, but also predominantly playing for this that's another dimension to your, your best 23 there Luke yeah I mean he's he's got the ability to as you're seeing there just clunk it forward as well which would um, probably take a bit of the strain off um, Larks which would, which would be helpful and then um, yeah chop out um, Tristan in the ruck so he's uh, been able to string a, a solid pre-season uh, hasn't missed too many sessions and um, I think that's probably been the only thing that's really held him back in, in previous years he hasn't been able to get that full pre-season so um, he's just another one that needs that continuity because we know uh, that he's got some, some really really good attributes and that's why we were so keen to get him from Richmond. So uh, probably hasn't had a great run at it the last couple of years, but he's looking uh, looking really good this year. And yeah, excited to see him get a run at it. Nine games last season for Callum Coleman-Jones. 24 years of age. So ticking down to the... The final few seconds here in, in this second quarter. Plan is to have uh, Hugh Greenwood in the second half join us up here in the in the commentary box as well. So stick around for that. But it's half time here. The blue team leading yellow 11 5 71 to 4 4 28. Luke, thanks for joining us in the comms box, giving uh, North Melbourne fans and members a bit of an insight into 
Yeah. Well, you're at the, and the team's at as well. And all the very best for season 2024. No, no worries. Thanks for having me. And um, thanks, everyone, for watching. And it's going to be exciting year ahead. So thanks for all the support. Luke McDonald joining myself, Ben Waterworth, here in the commentary box. We'll take a break. Come back with the second half in just a few moments. A drive that's on an entirely new level. So you can get more out of every moment. All hybrid Mazda CX-60. Elevate your world. At North Melbourne, we're bound by our heritage. Celebrating 25 years since 1999, we're building towards our next piece of silverware. We're bound by the shin bonus spirit. Tried to shake and bait. Luhai just gets rid of a man. And never take a backward step. LDU, the kangaroos have stunned. We're bound by heartbreak. Bound to bounce back once more. We're bound by grit and grind. To make every second count. We're bound by our community. To make a difference where it matters most. We're bound by our family. Bound to leave our own legacy. Now, Sid Barker Middles, Harry Sheezy. We're bound by the promise of the future. Bound to be greater than before. We're bound by the rule. To give everything to you. We're bound together. Diesel inside 50. Coleman Jones coming out, couldn't quite pluck it cleanly. Lean it was there. He's one of the VFL players. But Davies Uniac pounces on the ball and snaps the first goal. 23. He's carried that form in the summer. There's a pluck. His kick just lingered in the air a bit too long and probably on the fifth bite there. Curtis Games last year at AFL level. Side 50. Cooper Harvey pounces and snaps the goal. That was lovely. Cooper Harvey, the 2022 draftee. Games last year at AFL level. Side 50. Cooper Harvey pounces and snaps the goal. That was lovely. Cooper Harvey, the 2022 draftee side. Good link up here from the yellow team. And the kick has been marked. Side forward 50. Facial surgery. Now here's McKercher. That dashing. Go. Speed off halfback, and how about that for a precision left foot kick? That's a really impressive piece of play from Colby McKercher. Larky marks, waste no time, inside 50. Dersma up high, couldn't keep his feet, but Coleman Jones was waiting down low and kicks the goal. No, it's an intra club, but that is pretty impressive from North Melbourne end to end forward area. Pops it towards the hot spot. Larky in front. That was a perfect kick from Stevenson. So twice. Larky marks. And unselfishly gives it to Dersma. And the pick. Larky marks. And unselfishly gives it to Dersma. And the pick. The outer side here for the yellow team. And Lawson. He's able to take the mark. The switch paying dividends there for first kick of the quarter. And now Stevenson goes high inside 50. Pink dropping back. Zerha there waiting to pounce and bounces it through for his second goal. Play footy. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. Um, but yeah, obviously he'd love to be out there, but um, not too far away. So you do get a bit of FOMO when the game starts yeah. coming around, but it's a very long year. So. Um, yeah, but it's towards the top of the goal square. Lazaro to Larky, who just fumbled momentarily. Has support on the outside. I reckon that's Tyler Sellers who's got the ball. And he has been able to snap on the left foot and kick a goal. So Sellers able to kick his first of the game. As I mentioned before, um, coming through together. Really, really young, really close group, but really uh, competitive with each other. So... Um, yeah, they're bringing the best out of each other. It's a beautiful ball movement from the blue. 
have a look at the goals. Get the goal so far today. And just able to squeeze that one through as the have a look at the goals. Get the goal so far today. And just able to squeeze that one through as the sellers is the target again. Drury waiting, has Larky to his left. Big tackle from Pink, but it was an illegal wow. tackle. Uh, the yellow team for this game. In the meantime, Drury plays on, snaps around the body and kicks his first goal of the game. And the blue team on the scoreboard starting to, yeah, as everyone said, it's been a lean few years, um, but you know, the only way to change that is actions. There's a lot of words, but we've got to put it on, on the field and um, I feel like I've been, been able to do that so far this summer and she's excited to play genuine opposition. Yeah, God. it's going to be, going to be a, lengthy, uh, a lengthy season now. It's going to be an opening round and gather round. Snap around the body here. Bounces through for a goal for the yellow team. That's exciting. Wardlaw with the free kick and sends it long inside 50. Big flight from the side from Sellers. 35 to 40 metres to cover. Covers it easily. Goal on by doesn't move. So Sellers with his second. Um, got some real stability, which is um, which is just going to benefit us immensely. Allows an opportunity for Harvey to slam it inside. 50 is Lawson. Great pressure from Combin at the last minute. Jump. Just over the head of Wardlaw. One on one here with Taylor. Look at Wardlaw to bump Taylor off the ball and then get straight back to his feet. Feign the hand pass, swing on the left boot and hit, almost hit Drury. Almost did everything right. That's uh, on the end of a few things today here for the Kangaroos to Drury. Centers it to Stevenson. He marks me. So speaking about it in the first. I think you've seen that for a long time. Mm. But um, yeah, he's just he's got that composure and, and that confidence and um, he's been, yeah, hasn't missed a beat this preseason. So uh, I think he took a really big.
Welcome back to Arden Street Oval North Intra Club action and a lovely day for footy it must be on this uh, Wednesday morning as well. We've got the blue team and the yellow team. We're half time. Blue team 71, yellow team 28. The blue team, the stronger team on paper. Scoreboard largely irrelevant. We just want to see these players have a hit out one and obviously get through uh, injury free as well. Ben Waterworth with you here on the North Melbourne website. Great to have North fans and members along and special guests joining me for this third quarter as well. A player who's been around the AFL system, it has to be said, Hugh Greenwood, for <laughs> quite a while now. But uh, it's great to have you along. I was saying we had Luke McDonald in the uh, in the second quarter as well. Nice nice conditions. It'd be a uh, little peeve that you wouldn't be out there and trying to get a few more Ks in before round one. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, first of all, thanks for having me and shout out to everyone uh, at home watching. Um, but yeah, we've been really lucky We uh, with, in terms of the weather. It is actually a beautiful day today. Yesterday would have been a different story, oh, but yeah. today is beautiful and it's uh, the last intra club we uh, we had, we were it was absolutely blowing a gale out of the trove. <laughs> we did, certainly did not show yeah. our best. So hopefully... Uh, Everyone's a little bit more excited about what they're seeing today than they saw that day. Cammy Zerha has been pretty impressive so far. He can line up and try and kick his, his third goal today. He'd, I'm a natural side for a right footer. You'd back him on the snap as well. He's changed boots at uh, has he? half time, so <laughs> we'll see if it pays off. I have about uh, the 30 metres to cover. Cam Zerha on the right, just off to the left. Shouts of profanity as well as, as that went through out of bounds <laughs> on the full. So you mentioned the community camp uh, as well. Uh, how did, what was that uh, experience like? Obviously all AFL clubs involved at, at community camp sort of in, uh, in January, February time. What was uh, what were the ruse up to over the past uh, Yeah, past week or we so? had half the group uh, head to Bendigo again. We did that last year, which was, uh, which was awesome. We got out and uh, gave, our, gave back out there and the rest of the group were in uh, Werribee and Wyndham. Yep. So... Um, our, our huddle program is, is strongly tied to the communities down or in Wyndham. So um, that was really cool. Boys and, uh, yeah, boys who got back yesterday, had a little light flush, and here they are. Sellers. Simpkin to Sellers. He, so he moved from the yellow team to the blue team, uh, the VFL, this kangaroo, in the second quarter. Kicked two goals in that, uh, in that second quarter, and it's a great opportunity for players like... Tyler Sellers for Sam Lawson for Kay Delarue, who's a, a, dra a guy, I would say maybe the stiffest not to get drafted last year as well out of all, all the players. It's a great opportunity for these guys to show their wares. Yeah, and Sellers has been doing this at VFL all last year. Yeah. Sort of plucked from nowhere. He's just off um, to the right. But so uh, yeah, he kicked 30 goals in the VFL last year. Sammy Lawson kicked 34, yeah, I think it was. Too, yeah, Pretty handy uh, little tag team. The yeah, Lynchy. Yeah, Lynchy knows how to find him. He puts a lot of work <laughs> in the big chief, so he knows where to find him. Uh, my man Benny Davis too. Yes. Um, but uh, no, Sammy's been very good for a while, and uh, and so has Sellers. But CJ, good on CJ, sacrificing a bit of his forward stuff today to to give the rucks a bit of a chop out. Otherwise, yep. he'd. Uh, I know the first quarter he played that spot, so um, good on him for, for doing that. Good run from Hardiman, who's hoping for Maley. Who had Put his hands to the ball, but then he's uh, bounced on, on top as the umpire circles and pays holding the ball as well. So the blue team can rebound. It's this, this young, dynamic half-back line of Sheasel and McCurch chips it to Wardlaw. Just had a bit too much juice on the kick so they can pounce on the turnover. There is Lousen who can go is. back and have a look at the goals. Sammy Lousen, the perennial sort of mid-season draft prospect as well, but the pick-up he was for the VFL team last year. But what's, uh, what's the vibe been like over, over the off-season in particular? Hugh was saying to Luke beforehand, we know you've got a, a lot of high draft picks in recent years, but five first-rounders last year. Was there a bit of an injection of, I suppose, more youthful enthusiasm over the, over the off-season? Yeah, it's, it's hard because in, in order to, uh, to have first or five first-round draft picks, to have draft picks, you've got to let guys go. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's hard in being in a rebuilding phase where you see so many come and go. So a lot of, we lost a lot of... A lot of good players, a lot of great people last year, but obviously we've topped up some, with some serious, serious talent and we're seeing glimpses of it um, with Durs and Colby who yep. will probably feature fairly early. Yep. Um, but big Will Dawson who's for 18, just turned 18 into 70 year old yeah. kid. Like Once he feels out, it's going to be pretty, be pretty special. And then, and then Riley too. Um, uh, we're pretty, pretty likely. Of course, Taylor Goad not out there today, but 
Luke was saying I knew I was missing one. I knew I was missing one, but the bit unicorn, unicorn, yeah, he's the he's the one we'll lock away for a little while and yeah. break him out. A bit like uh, Braden George this year. Kept, yeah. kept him locked away, uh, but when he gets his chance, um, he'll show some things. I saw George doing some nice things off halfback for the yellow team in that uh, in that uh, second quarter in particular. What, from what you've seen across the uh, first two and a bit bit quarters, as that Dawson goes up along with. Common. What have uh, what are some who are the players that have sort of stood out to you over the, over the first two and a bit quarters? Yeah, obviously X has um, been pretty dominant in the ruck. The big yep. fella. He's not. He's pretty hard to miss there with a the helmet on now too. <laughs> um, big X. You got to protect. You got to protect him from himself and then uh, protect yourself from him. But he's uh, he's been really good. Sheasel just knows what pads to run. He's experimented through the mids at times through the preseason, but yep. it's just slotted straight back in. As it's a nice kick. Durs. Yeah, there he is. Zane Durs from. Directly in front, so he played the first half in the blue team and kicked uh, kicked the one goal. I think McDonald in the second quarter it was a slightly tougher shot and said Zay won't miss this, and he missed it quite to the right. So <laughs> commentator's curse. He got he oh, got man. his first experience of the commentator's curse. But <laughs> Dersma directly in front, a uh, super talented 190 centimetre draftee okay, from last year. He's got all the tools and all the power and the goal sense as well. And this time he. He puts it. Uh, he puts it right through, and he's uh, going to add a sense of dyn dynamism to this uh, to this forward line, isn't he? Yeah, he is. We see it with 42s, obviously not out there today too. That sort of hybrid that can do a bit of tall stuff, do a bit of small stuff, but just got that X factor. So um, in terms of that role there, those two will will fight for it. But whoever plays will be will be pretty good for us. 40 was a rising star, I think, the last yep. round of the year. So he came out of the season in good form, just had a, has an ankle, but I think he's due back soon. So yeah. for the first time in a while, we'll have a real competition for spots. So it's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, basically it's outside of Griffin. Everyone's looking yep. pretty good for for round one at the moment. We'll sort of, that'll all sort of play it over, over the next couple of weeks. But just per, an update personally where, where you're where you're at and what, what is sort of the boxes you need to tick over the, the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so I tweaked the, uh, tweaked the ankle a week ago or a bit over a week ago now. Yep. It's, same thing happened last year. You got through all the, the thick of it and then the deload week um, got injured. So right. um, not the worst timing in the world. Still five weeks away from round one. Yeah. A few practice games in between. So thankfully I, I was able to do all of the pre-season. So I've got a pretty good base. Um, so we'll just keep ticking, ticking along. The old basketball ankles have seen a fair bit, yeah, so I'm they sure are, have. They are, they're, um, they normally take a fair bit to go. So they did a pretty good job, but should be hopefully in the next week or two start to, to track back into to playing. Yeah, again, see Cameron Zerha tucked up. That's deep in the pocket. In I can't even see Real that. deep yeah. in the pocket. This time on the non-preferred side for a for a right footer, but we know his uh, awesome goal sense. Got a really good look at it here on our cameras. He's just off to the. The new side this, uh, the this boot time. swap them back, <laughs> swap them back. You mentioned uh, the basketball ankles. Well, have, yeah. we and we've seen a fair bit of Finbar Maley uh, yeah. today going up against uh, going up against Tristan Sherry a, a, a lot of the time. What have you made of uh, the uh, the rookie from uh, who's He's taken in the, the rookie draft last year? Yeah, you've seen a couple of really good clunks. Mm. Um, I don't know if, if I'm sure as time goes on, fans will get. Um, more exposure to him, but he's just a ripping fella. Yeah, like one of the nicest blokes you'll see. He's super authentic, but he's seen some, like he's seen some, uh, seen some things. He can clunk him. He's got a great run and jump, but again, only new to the game, so so yep. much learning to do. Same with Goaty. Yep. Um, but to pluck him, I think he's only 20. Yep. so <laughs> yep. He's got some, some, uh, some pedigree in the family too, but he's uh, he's good, and he will be good. Just as good as get, get games in anyway. him. He's Taylor. Oh, just ran into trouble there. Hansen has uh, moved into the, into the blue jumper this, uh, for this quarter. He wins the ball back for oh. holding the ball and probably could have been marked. But, uh, it's been thumped out of bounds instead and will be tossed back in. The blue team leading 11 6 72 to yellow team 5 6 36. So a little bit more overcast. For a pretty sunny first uh, first half. Cam bowling everyone over, yeah. including his own. <laughs> Davies Uniac just over around the ball there, but it's plucked there by Cal Dawson to Pink, who's back in the blue. So he's gone blue, yellow, blue across the three quarters. And there's some run from Goda to Sheasel, who's just been racking up the footy for fun. Hang Sherry, on, that was pretty... Uh, not, yeah, it was Cuda feed. He's like with the one Duke. And now they're uh, off and running through Drury. He's in the yellow team for this uh, this second half. 
at least the start of the second half. Mailey, there he is on cue. Oh, Moose. He did well around the body, hoping for the lucky bounce. Come off, but it's gone out of bounds. That's probably been a bit, a bit of a trend with us. Uh, obviously, generating our ball movement looked pretty good, but there was opportunities to kick there. As you yeah. probably could have seen, turn it over, and now it's uh, instead of getting inside 50 for blue, it's getting inside 50 for yellow. Is that the next something evolution? That we've been, yeah, we are like, I can clearly want to encourage the ball movement, and yeah. it looks really good at times, but there's still opportunities to kick, and that was certainly one. So how important is it to then get the ball in the hands of the likes of Sheasel and McKercher coming off? Yeah, well, that's why we get them there, to yeah. generate our stuff. But it was almost one too many, and Sheez ran into a bit, a little, little bit of trouble there. Um, I know that this big Suvi will be demanding it <laughs> down there, and especially if we've got CJ and we've got Sellers down there as well as not at all. Um, we'd rather just kick that. Here we go again. Yeah, so Stevens so, involved. He will help that ball movement, you think, this season as well. Yep. Simpkin Marks had a really impressive quarter. He wanted met a penalty but none forthcoming here is Stevens you know that uh, precise left foot kick that he had at the Swans and he brings oh. it here to the Ruse with a lace out pass great kick from Dylan Stevens hits Zerha on the chest and you heard Luke McDonald in the second quarter Hugh talking about uh, Stevens's running capacity in particular yeah. but that left foot as well will be will be important it's particularly forward of center yeah he can run he can run all day like as, as blown up our GPS this preseason sort of came in and sort of set the tone set the standard him and Tuck both those guys from in, from different clubs coming yeah. in and showing um, how good their running is but disco can turn on a dime too um, so his ability to somehow oh, I haven't seen him use his right a lot I'm always <laughs> about using his right because he's got that ability to turn back inside yeah and get defenders to miss and you still get back to his left so um yeah it's, it's pretty deadly what that's cam's third third crack this quarter and yeah finally kick one yeah he's got his he's got his third goal for the game first of uh, of this quarter as well he's yeah, cut nice. the ground really really well and he spoke to the, the media uh, last week i think it was and talked about that he likes getting up in in the midfield and getting yeah. himself into the game as well but close to goal he's so deadly oh yeah well that's the thing that's the Ah, that's the the situation we've got with him because he is so good around the footy. Mm. To have him up around the footy is, is great for us. But then when he gets it forward, who have we got there to, to be that sort of X factor down yep. there again? Because he kicks goals and he does creates as well. So we're just trying to find that balance of how much do we get him around the footy, but how much do we still need him to kick goals down forward? Um, but hope with the midfield now with Georgie healthy, yep. Lazaro stepping up, Phil Powley, these guys. Yeah. Might not have to depend on him so much, but definitely get little spits of him through there. And of course, he's only in his first year as well, so expectations internally certainly will be low. But yep. if Zane Dersma is that kind yeah, of X, right. X factor, as we see some great hands here from Davies Uniac and Lazaro and Stevenson and Lazaro. Great ball movement. Sellers is rewarded and kicks the goal from nice. point blank range. Explosive work from the, the blue team out of the middle. And Sellers is kicked through. Three goals for the blue team so far today. A very impressive outing for him. Walks straight out the front here. Yeah, you take three that. blues straight out the front. Yeah. Next one, next one, next one. And Simkin looks really fit yeah. as well. Yeah, he plays that, that mid forward role really, really well just because yeah. he can run. He just connects both the forwards and the mids so well. And another one that's just team first, who's one, two, Sid Barker's playing purely as an inside yep. mid. Yeah. Um, but has put his hand up to sort of play that hybrid forward mid role. Um, but as you can see, he's getting his mid minutes now, but it won't be 100%, which most guys might demand. But he's, he's the captain of the footy club, put his hand up to play a bit of both. Colin Jones doing the ruck work now against uh, Tristan Cherry. You mentioned Josh Simpkins, Sid Barker medal finishes. Four consecutive top 10 finishes in the Sid Barker medal. Two of them obviously first, and an another one finished uh, runner up back in. 2020. So he's uh, under his uh, co captain and looked as a leader in this club for his consistency. So, I mean, there's another one, Yuzerha equivalent, but yep. at VFL level. Yep. So damaging around goals, but can get his hands around the stoppage too. So, so there's Nuon taking the intercept mark as well. Luke and, and I were talking about despite losing Ben Makai to Essendon and Griffin Lowe being out for, we think, sort of the first part of the, the season, you've got some key defensive. Depth still with Nuon coming to the club, Toby yeah. Pink coming to the club, Combin changing roles. Yeah, guys that haven't played a lot of um, AFL footy, clearly, but have shown glimpses at VFL and at state yeah. league level. Pinky, the best defender out of the sample. Yeah. Biggie, obviously, 
a lot of depth at Richmond and hasn't been able to crack too many, but for them to come across and put their hand up. Cow Dawson, another one we plucked yeah. from VFL level, had had to wait so long last year to finally get a game, but that yeah. last game of the year showed why he's more than capable at the level. So those guys are all fighting, and then Big Chomer. So Lazaro, Lazaro outside of the rice, just hitting the left post on that occasion. But he was a player, Charlie Lazaro, that set his pre-season up, and he's been one of the most hyped yep. players uh, across the, the, the summer. But he set his pre-season up with a strong final game against uh, the Gold Coast Suns as well. Probably his best game, he's carried that that uh, form into, into the summer, Hugh. Yeah, definitely. He was another one that just dominated each and every week. Um, credit to him. It can get pretty gloomy down there when you're playing really, really good footy at two's level and not getting an opportunity. But he stayed he stayed ready. So when he got his chance late in the year, he was more than capable. And, uh, yeah, to, as you said, took that confidence. Oh, it's going to get over. I think that is. That's going to be a oh. goal, is it, to Stevens? I think if we were at AFL level, that would probably be an arc job. But that is awarded as a goal to... Dylan Stevens, there's that uh, precise left foot kick. I reckon he was trying to pass it. Well. <laughs> no, no, it was definitely a shot. <laughs> He'll claim it as a shot. Stevens, nonetheless, is awarded the goal. So he played 43 games and kicked 11 goals for the Sydney Swans before the trade to North Melbourne last year. Played in their granny, didn't he? Played in their yes, uh, grand final. Yes, I think. And he Didn't was play um, a lot last year. He, um, he was asleep when he was actually officially traded from uh, Sydney <laughs> to uh, North Melbourne because he was uh, overseas in London. Yeah. And, Woke up at 9.30 a.m. to a, a stack load of texts, yeah, finding out that the, the deal had been done. But I think North North uh, Recruit is very, very pleased to, to get that to get that deal over the line. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think he's been in the works for a while. I think he's one of the first ones to get knocked over. So yeah. But like I said, he's come in and he's set the tone with his running and um, fits that age profile too. Slots in beautifully. Back in the middle, Davies Uniac has been getting clearances for fun today. Here's McKercher streaming off the, the back of the centre square. He kicks it long and high inside, 50 hoping for Larky, but Combin playing in front. That's a terrific intercept mark from Charlie Combin. Just a, a luckless run with injury over yeah. several seasons, but he got his body right, Hugh, and he, he's an imposing figure back there in defence. Well, that's another one. You've you got to protect you got to protect him from himself yeah. at times. Um, but you love, you love to have him on your group because he just uh, puts his body on the line. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's cost him at times, but hopefully as, uh, as a defender now, he can sort of determine where he can run and jump in and crash in. So here goes the yellow. Nice ball move. Yeah, linking up via, via hands. Benny Davis, the former Crow, involved. And Drew's in position A. That is a penetrating kick with ample, uh, ample depth on it. And uh, Drury has drifted forward and take the mark and can have a look at the goals here for, for the yellow team. He has one goal so far today. He was the, the top North rookie pick a couple of years ago. Excellent. It's his, it's his day today. Valentine's Day is <laughs> his day. And he'll tell you all about it. <laughs> it's his day. He's up and about. So no wonder he's playing all right today. He'll have a little little Valentine's date lined up tonight knowing uh, the big Blakey jury. <laughs> Shout out to his date if, uh, <laughs> if they're watching on as well. He's Bergman off half back. Penetration on that kick as well. Lean it going up with Sellers. Colin Jones for a ground level. The Kircher just fumbled but goes back and wins it. Inspiration shown. Pick up. Yellow team go inside 50. Trying to trap it there was Cal Dawson. Went behind him and Maley wasn't taken high. He wasn't according to the umpire, so it'll be thrown back in. Yeah, Cow's another one that's had he and Lazaro, um, Tucker, those those three have been probably our best yep. um, through the preseason so far, so um, a little bit quieter today, which can happen um, when you're on the blue team and you're dominating the but scoreboard. He's but he's constantly in match team. He's constantly yep. been in that first team. Oh, yeah. Cal Dawson. Each and every, he's kicked a couple of nice ones too. Oh, that's a lovely snap. Charlie, I think it is. Yeah. So that is... A goal for yeah, Kate, Yellow. Kate. They've uh, got a couple in, uh, in this quarter as well. So they go to 6 7 43, blue 14 7 91. So we, I spoke to Lucas about this a little bit earlier because we've heard a lot from from Jai in the, in the media and Cam as well last week about the, the, the senior players now. And they are senior players. After Jack goes and Todd goes and, and Cunnington retires last. Um, last uh, year as well. They're, those guys are the senior players now and there's a sense, call it urgency, but maybe it's even a sense of frustration, Hugh, that they, 
they're, they're sick of being in the, in, around sort of that, that, that bottom bottom four territory. Do you go in with a similar mindset this year? Yeah, it's it's you, they say senior with a smile because yeah, they're sure. only twenty five yeah. six. You, you look at senior players at other clubs. You're talking two fifty games, yeah. thirty plus been in the system ten odd years. Yeah. So we are asking a lot of those guys. But as you said, they're willing to put their hand up and they they are sick of being where they are and. Having come from the Suns and experienced a similar thing, I got there at a time when you took Millers, again, younger guys. Yeah. Dave Swallow been around a little bit longer, but those Jack Bowes, um, Benny Ainsworth, Kingy, those guys had were sick of losing too. Yeah, like yeah, they yeah. were at stages like, yep, we've been through the ringer. Jared Witts, like those guys have been there for, him and Dave had been there, Sammy Day, Lemo, those guys have been there for eight, ten years and had constantly been down towards mm. the bottom of the ladder. So, um, to see it similar here, you just yeah, it's 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 good. But again, we're asking a lot of those young uh, our young leaders and our senior guys, but um, it starts with those guys. And hopefully, our five draft picks this year and your Georges and Harrys and that, yep. the penny will drop for them too. Jury marks in inside fifty because you've gone from sort of fourth, fifth in terms of youngest and most inexperienced in the competition to yeah. 18th. Yeah. Because, and that a big chunk of that is, is Cunnington's Evil and, and Goldstein, of course, going a, a, as well. But if you are to make that jump, you're right, it, it's going to be uh, a lot of reliance on, on those younger guys having to having to step up as well. But the talent on paper is there, Hugh. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, again, it's just, it's going to be a bit of patience, of course. Yeah. Um, and just getting experience. But you can't, these guys, that jump from 50 to 100, 150 games, like that's just what we need. We need to get games into these guys. We saw it at times last year where the results weren't going our way, but we're getting the games into into our kids. So um, we've seen glimpses for sure, but there'll certainly be growing pains. It'll be weeks, it'll, and it'll be week to week. But from what we've seen through the preseason and the attitude and the, the things we're hearing from the guys, um, yeah, it's re it's really really exciting. CJ. And with with those the, the, the three you know greats of of the club departing at the end of last year and, and you being a senior player yourself, do, does your role change? Is your attitude are you a bit more of a teacher, I suppose, um, this season? Does, yeah, does, does your attitude, I suppose, change with with a very young list? Yeah, yeah, and I I mean I tried to again I, I went to the Gold Coast with a similar mentality, being yep. sort of a not an on field leader, and the same thing will happen here. So not a not a whole lot changes. I just now become close to being the oldest. Pup's still got that mantle. But even myself, I, I joke about, in terms of footy years, I'm still only 28, 27, yeah, yeah, yeah. 28, because I, I didn't actually come back to footy till I was like 24, 25, yeah. I think. So I joke around that there's still plenty left in the tank. And in terms of footy years, there's plenty left. So, um, But in terms of life experience and things like that, um, and games played, I suppose, it's a one-on-one -on -one here. Oh, Pink oh. Is, uh, oh, well has got it, and he did well to get the hand pass off to... Bergman, Cal Dawson has been able to find Coleman Jones. They got out of the, the pickle there, the blue team. Wardlaw linking up with Sheasel. Thought about the one-two. Sheasel said pulls the trigger and made it look easy with that right foot kick into the middle of the Davies Union. So much time and space, Sheasel. He has got a thumping right foot kick and he spears it inside 50, pinpoint to Zerha. Is that where he was kicking you? I don't <laughs> think so. It did look a little wobbly off the boot. Zerha will take it. He is the uh, particularly since uh, quarter time, Zerha has looked far more ominous inside that, uh, inside that forward 50. So he can line up and attempt to kick his fourth goal of the game. He'll have about 52 metres to cover. Swings out to the left. He'll go right to the line. It's sumped through for eight. And a score in the end. So blue team pushing towards the ton here at... Uh, Harden Street Oval down towards sort of the last six minutes of this quarter in particular. So we talk about sort of the change from a playing group perspective, but there's also been a, a fair bit of off-field change as well. You add pl uh, coaches like Xavier Clark and uh, Jed Adcock to th that coaching group, along with Alistair, who you know, hopefully gets a, a, a really good sort of full season runner yeah. as well. So uh, has there been, a, I suppose, a different vibe with, with the new coaching setup this year? Yeah, there has. We brought in big Mickey Barlow. We poached him from yes. Werribee too after the year that he had. So... Um, again, building those relationships um, with your coaches, it's all new line coaches. Again, lost good people, but gained some great people too. Yeah. Um, but they've come in very fresh and ready to, and Clark goes second year, like you said. Hopefully, as we go inside 50, he can have a better run at it last year for all of our sake and for his sake too. 
Yeah, he loves playing for it. The <laughs> That's two he's got. Do you like giving Blake Jury some stinky? Oh, I love Blakey. Yeah. <laughs> he's one of my favourites, Blakey. <laughs> he's, uh, how tall is he? He's 176, Blake Drury. He's got a tenacious uh, little player as well. He's a smart player. Very smart. Well. Always smart. seems to get himself yeah. in the right position. I think... Coming through his draft, he was compl compared to, to Jack Higgins in terms of his footy smarts and able to get to the right spots. Yeah. But he uh, can also play a little, probably a little bit higher up the ground, which he's got, got up his sleeve. Yeah, he can run. He can run, um, Blakey. He likes a smart person and smart footballer. Yeah. Not a very smart kick on that one as it goes out <laughs> the foot. But um, speaks really. I think he was captain of, uh, of Caulfield yep. Um, yep. in his draft year. So, yep. um, again, one of those younger guys that... We're asking a lot in terms of leadership, but he's not he's very comfortable in doing that for sure, especially with the VFL games he played last year. McKercher from deep in defence. This has gone uh, out of bounds on the full uh, in fact uh, out of bounds, so it'll be uh, it'll be tossed back in. Just in front of that uh, the big scoreboard there. There's lots of interested onlookers. Dual premiership uh, Kangaroo, David King is uh, out there. This would be sitting somewhere. He's tweeting. He'd be tweeting away right, somewhere. Yeah, right. And he's uh, probably the same. He's sort of in the, the blue polo and the white shorts just at the oh, back yeah, there. Yeah, right yeah. near where Davies Uniac <laughs> is uh, handballing this ball away. Wardlaw pulls the trigger with a kick in the middle, but it's uh, been chopped off. A high kick inside 50. Pink is. There, but and he's done a couple of nice things one on one today. Put in the first quarter, some intercept marks, but yep. seems seems to have good body positioning on, on his opponent all the time. Toby Pink. Yeah, again, having been through the AFL system, never got his crack, but honed his craft at down at the bays in Adelaide. Yeah, but Yellow have been pretty good this quarter. They have played a lot of played a lot of in their half. Cam's chopped them out a little bit. I think Cam's just about every had every shot on goal. So they build up. Oh. The Kirch's run was excellent. He almost ran it past two thirds of the length of the field. Here. Lazaro did kick and did find Zerha. Stevenson on over the top. Might have a shot here, Stevenson. He's been no, he unselfish today. Unselfish he is. And he almost, uh, almost came off. It was kicked off the ground by Stevens after Taylor dropped the mark. And Stevens sneaks forward and kicks his second goal of the quarter. And, uh, they're really within striking distance of the ton now. The blue team, a good run and gun. This time via hand. And then they pulled the trigger yeah, pulled the with, trigger. Uh, with, with the kick. And, uh, it ultimately leads to a deep shot shot at goal, which is so important in modern day footy. You can have inside 50s, but you, you want inside 30s. Yeah, and Steve O again, up 16 in inch club, easily could have had a shot there. But um, what you don't see from Steve O is his off ball running, his team first stuff. So if you're yeah. in the centre of that, that's Steve O 101, so 101. Connection. Um, you still need the guy. Which we love, which we love from Steve O. Okay. As you look at the, the oh, centre. Cool. Bounce crew, Wardlaw, Phillips, Davies Uniac, <laughs> Phillips starting with the yellow team, but yeah, having a run on the blue team as well. Charlie Lazaro has basically stayed with the blue team the, the whole time as well, giving you a bit of an indication of what uh, the, the coaching staff think he's at at the moment. They, after an excellent preseason, Sheasel loves that high holding free kick against Simkin. Going the way here of Hardiman. Loose. Maley dropped it. Gives New an opportunity to rebound. Lazaro linking up with Davies Uniac. Thumps it inside 50. Stevenson caught behind. Gets the crumbs. Has options. Again, centers it. And didn't come off on this occasion. So, oh, nice little elbow in there from Powell. It's, uh, is that Cooper Harvey who's copped it? Let's look on replay. He's uh, at home. Oh, is that a fine or a... <laughs> not sure. An AFL level? Cheeky one? Yeah, it would be. But it's something he looked at. There's uh, Tom Powell. He is... Uh, that free kick. It gives an opportunity here for Cooper Harvey. Uh, who kicked a couple of goals for when he was playing for the yellow team. And now for the blue, that goal kicking trend continues. So can kick goals, Coop. Yeah. So 21 goals. in the VFL last year from 13 games, which yeah. led to 
AFL opportunities, but he's covered the ground quite well today. Yeah, and that's been the growth for him. He can kick goals, but what is he doing when he's not kicking goals? Yep. Is he getting up and down the ground? Is he forward pressure? He's sort of that mid-size, so what we depend on him for our pressure stuff and getting up and down the ground. So he's come back really fit, had a shoulder late in the year, yep. which... Um, which sucked, but at least he got to have a good block in the off-season, sort of rehabbed, but kept training all the way through, and um, has been another one that's just kicking goals. Yeah. And he's still sucking it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he caught one. But, uh, good enough to convert on the set shot. So a minute and a half left in this third quarter, and then we've got one more quarter after that here at Arden Street Oval. He balled up in the middle. It'll be Cherry and Coleman Jones going at it again. Bounce favoured Sherry. Comes down to Phillips. No, Coleman Jones will again thump it inside. 50 Zerha presents. Big defensive thump away. Might allow the op opportunity here for Yellow Team to rebound. Tackle applied on that occasion. So it'll be balled up inside the, uh, the blue 50 metre arc. Good to see all kinds of Roo fans in the building. Humans and dogs, as well as we just saw on our, uh, on our screen. They're so, probably chomping at the bit to get on the over ah, than us, the locals, with the fencing up, get their dogs out here. Sewing up the sides here. Here is Sharp. There's uh, Maley Marks on the wing. Final minute of this quarter. Great kick. Well done, Bruce. Kick oh. from Maley. And now they can build through the middle of the yellow team at Arden Street. Oh, Drury again. Finds himself on and the end of it, inside 50. Smart, just knows where to run. Yep. And he's, that's not like Trout. <laughs> Come on, Trout. <laughs> and that ball with Tristan Sherry. You basically have the, the final say of this third quarter as well. Donning the, uh, donning the helmet after facial surgery pretty recently. Obviously, only, can, uh, only played the nine games last year. His uh, campaign was was hindered by a syndesmosis injury, but uh, he's, uh, he's going to have a big say on, on North's fortunes in 2024. On the siren from directly in front. I think he's just off to the right and through for a minor score. The final score of this uh, third quarter. We've got one more quarter coming back. Hugh, it's been an absolute pleasure yeah, to no, have you on. You. Really enjoyed your insights and your... Uh, and your, your digs at Blake Drury right throughout the, uh, <laughs> the quarter. Uh, all the very best uh, personally and for the team going forward in 2024. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. If you're missing me, um, thank you for everyone that come along today and listening at home. But my number one, Marnie, I know will be listening. So happy Valentine's Day to you, Marnie, um, who runs the North podcasts yes. uh, at home. So I know she'll be watching intently. I wanted to give her a shout out. She's my number one fan on uh, on Twitter, so it looks out for me. Um, but appreciate you having me, and hopefully we'll see you guys at AIA. I believe yes, next, next week, week, next so Tuesday. We'll see you guys there, and then now to, I think it's Monica. Is that is it Monica? What's the one that's in Kilda? Um, Morabin. Uh, Morabin. Yes. Uh, in a couple potato, of weeks. Potato. Cheers. Cheers. Mate. Good <laughs> on you, Hugh. Who's up next? Uh, I, I think I'm riding solo for the fourth oh, no. quarter. So oh, we'll, well, good luck. Thank you, mate. Uh, we'll come back in uh, just a few moments with the fourth quarter. A drive that's on an entirely new level, so you can get more out of every moment. All hybrid Mazda CX-60. Elevate your world. At North Melbourne, we're bound by our heritage. Celebrating 25 years since 1999, we're building towards our next piece of silverware. We're bound by the shin bone of spirit. Tried to shake and bait. Zuha just gets rid of a man. Jetsman. Never take a backward step. LDU, the kangaroos have stunned. We're bound by heartbreak. Bound to bounce back once more. We're bound by grit and grind. To make every second count. We're bound by our community. To make a difference where it matters most. We're bound by our family. Bound to leave our own legacy. Now, Sid Barker Middles, Harry Sheezy. We're bound by the promise of the future. Bound to be greater than before. We're bound by the rule. To give everything to you. We're bound together.
Oh, 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 Final quarter of the North Melbourne intra club clash here at Arden Street Oval. Just a few moments away. We're seeing the blue team up against the yellow team here on the, the Kangaroos website. Great to have your company wherever you're watching. Ben Waterworth with you, calling all the action. Great to have the insights also throughout uh, the past couple of quarters from co captain Luke McDonald. What's up, guys? And uh, Hugh Greenwood as well in that third quarter as well. The two players who are. Uh, Certainly Luke was, was pretty close to playing. I think it was definitely it was a home and away game Luke would probably would have played today. Hugh, I think, uh, might be pushing for having a crack at uh, match simulation or maybe a little bit later with the uh, Community Series game. So fourth quarter underway. It's the blue team leading 16-8, 104 to the yellow team, 6-10, 46. But team, players from both teams have been swapping right throughout the uh, right throughout the game so far, including Charlie Lazaro, who's gone on the yellow team for uh, for this last quarter. And the yellow team go inside 50. Hardiman is brought down and he's going to be caught holding the ball. Hardiman has played three quarters in the yellow, but has gone onto the blue team for this, uh, for this final quarter. He was caught by Lawson. Nelson will send deep inside 50, but Sherry's back in the hole, but it's been marked. That's young Charlie Harrop who's been able to pluck that. He's already kicked uh, one goal so far in this contest. Charlie Harrop named in this side today, 186 centimetre forward from the, uh, the Sandy Dragons last year. He was part of the, the Sandingham Dragons premiership team in the Coates Talent League, and was also skipper of the Halebury Premiership team in the APS as well. So he kicks another goal. And now that's the first goal of the quarter for the yellow team. So just a reminder of some of the players who aren't out there today. There's 13 AFL listed players that uh, aren't out there. Uh, we heard from Hugh Greenwood and uh, Luke McDonald. Donald's got the hamstring. Hugh Green will just tweak his ankle last week, but should be good to go. Bailey Scott uh, has the calf injury at the moment. Zach Fisher, uh, probably of all the, the the 13 players that are out, probably Fisher might be the most touch and go for from round one, from from what I understand. Just uh, with with uh, his uh, with his setback recently. Obviously Griffin Logue not out there as well as he recovers from the ACL injury. Paul Curtis, Eddie Ford, Jackson Archer not out there. Hamish Free is in the concussion protocols. So um, he's, a, he's another ruck option for the Kangaroos. Aiden Kaur uh, not out there as well. Taylor Goad, not necessarily anything uh, wrong with him from an injury perspective, but just a, a loads management thing. Still, a, still very raw, but uh, mega talented unicorn as we've heard uh, Greenwood and uh, McDonald say on, on commentary so the other players not out there for uh, for the Kangaroos today Blue team trying to pick it up here at half back just fumbled though by McKercher but he was able to follow up with the tackle Drury good enough though to get it to Lazaro and he was able to go short and find a teammate and well Sellers was waiting for it but uh, in the end he's if our partner in crime, Lawson, able to pinch it. And Lawson can have a look at the goals here for the yellow team. AFL star for, for many, many years. And Lawson drills it as well. So he gets, uh, gets the goal. As I've uh, spoken about a fair bit today with uh, Luke McDonald and, and Hugh Green, there is a, there is a sense, of, I suppose, of urgency amongst the, the North Melbourne playing group this year. We heard Jai Simkin in January telling reporters, he said this, everyone on the list now is getting sick of being where we are. The coaches who have come in, and I suppose he's talking about Alistair Clarkson last year and more recently Jed Adcock and Xavier, Xavier Clark, those coaches, they don't want to be down the bottom either. So I think it's just a combination of the whole club being sick of being at the bottom, and I think we want to make make that change. And I suppose it's a you know an admirable declaration from from Simkin. 
he's been a key figure both on and off the field for, for North so far this decade. The club's won 12 of its past 84 games and finished in the, the bottom two for four years straight. But despite being the youngest and most inexperienced list in the AFL this season, there's a, there is a sense amongst this playing group, and I really sense that when speaking to Luke McDonald beforehand, there is a sense that they believe they are talented enough to start to make inroads up uh, up the ladder. Nice little sort of fame from the, the yellow team inside 50, but Nuon has come out and taken an intercept mark. Here's a new look back line. Biggie Nuon is, is part of that, as is Colby McKercher, who takes the mark. McKercher goes short to Phillips. Now Sherry, who spent the third quarter playing with the yellow team. Sherry sends it out wider. That could not have kicked it any better. Jaden Stevenson didn't have to break stride, and he kicks inside 50. Just lingered a little in the air for Zerha, and they're able to work it out in the end here. The yellow team, Braden George, involved. Bergman's kick, though, has been intercepted. And uh, Will Dawson, what a mark for the blue team. He's uh, swapped between the two sides a bit today. So yellow team bring it down the wing here. One on one between Sellers and Will Dawson. Free kick, according to the umpire, going the way of Dawson. Remarkably, turns 19 in December this year. He's a he's a youngin, but so much appeal to the recruiters right across the AFL landscape in uh, October, November last year and really bolted into first round calculations and he looks really assured at uh, certainly this, this level at the moment will obviously be given plenty of time to develop at, uh, at VFL level in a sense before getting a crack at, at senior level. Here's Nick Larkey. Good look at it here on our screens. And he kicks it beautifully. Nick Larkey. He's got his second goal of this contest. And uh, as uh, Hugh Greenwood said, the likes of Simpkin, Larkey and Zerha are all declaring that they, uh, they're sick of being at the bottom. They're, they're senior players now. But they're only 25 years of age. Zerha's played 99 games. Larkey's played the 94 games. Simpkin's played the 134 games. Senior players at other clubs all have 250 plus games. But, uh, a lot is being asked of uh, of these these players who are, who are heading towards the, the the prime of their careers. I suppose a lot of attention will be on Luke Davies Uniac as well, 24 years of age, but 85 games to his name. Here's Lazaro trying to pounce it. Comes out to Powell. Who Feeds the hand pass out to Stevenson. Eyes light up, looks at the goals and drills it. More reward for effort for Jaden Stevenson. He kicks his second goal of the game. But he's been so selfless right throughout this contest so far. Trying to bring teammates into the game. And Stevenson, this time, saw an opportunity inside the attacking 50. And drilled the major. And the blue team go to 18-8-116. Yellow 8-10-58. 25-minute quarters. So still just under 20 minutes remaining at Arden Street Oval. It's been great to have you with us wherever you, you've been watching. Hope you've enjoyed it on the, uh, the North Melbourne stream. Some opportunity for players to... Push their round one prospects over the next few minutes. Lawson having a run on the ball here. Kicks it forward. Again, Will Dawson with the intercept mark. He looks like he's just got better as this game has progressed. Put on a lot of size over in his short time at, at North Melbourne. I remember covering him last year in, in his draft campaign for the, the Gippsland Power and He's, uh, he really has put on some size in, in a short space of time. Very exciting. Here he is backing back with a fly to the ball. Just misjudged it a little bit. 
a screamer was teased. Didn't come to fruition in the end. Bergman, nice composure shown. Go short to Maley, who wasn't expecting it. Maley is able to mark. High and long, inside 50. Nuon was there. It comes to ground, and the yellow team have been able to snap through a nice goal. And it's their ninth Huggy. goal so Huggy. far in this contest. No one was involved in, in the one-on-one. -on -one. Didn't quite come to uh, fruition. So just looking at it around and looking, trying to find the players who might have been put on ice in this fourth quarter. Looking around, I can't see Zane Dersma out there at the moment. We saw a fair bit of him in the, in the first half. Looks like he's been... Uh, Put on, uh, put on ice, I think, for, um, not literally, but just uh, taking it easy for the, the last quarter here. Of course, the main goal, I suppose, out of today is to, to get some somewhat competitive match minutes in, but also that everyone gets through scot-free. Wardlaw explodes away from the stoppage, was hoping for some run from Davies Uniac on the outside, and Davies Uniac provides that. On the left this time inside 50, and it's juggled by Lena. It might have been touched, though, by a blue team player, so probably allows some, some quick rebound in the end. New on at the back, and he's uh, caught out there. Pink may have been held. No free kick oh, is paid. Comes to Lawson, feigns it, and did well to bring in... A teammate who kicks the goal. So yellow team off to a really good start in this quarter. So guys, I'm dealing with the Rick here. He is sick. So North enters 2024 with the, the youngest and least experienced list. Of course, they <laughs> retirements last year from Jack Zebel and, and Aaron Hall. Todd Goldstein and, and Ben Mackay joining Essendon as well, but they really have topped up at the at the uh, at the trade and free agency table and and the draft. Dylan Stevens comes in, Zach Fisher comes in, Toby Pink, and Biggie Newon via free agency, and then the the five draftees headlined by by Dursma and, and McKercher, Goad, Dawson, and Hardiman in particular, and Finbar Mailing joining as a rookie. So. Fair bit of list turnover from the Kangaroos. They've been in rebuild mode for a long time, but these, if it clicks for them, have a good injury run. It could be a very promising season. Powell stole it, got it to Simpkin, back to Powell. See Stevenson by himself. Instead went lateral to Davies Uniac. Was he tackled without a ball? He, he was. So Davies Uniac, just a little ginger. Just a little ginger. Having that right leg, but he's good. he'll be okay to, to go back and take his kick. Just a bit of uh, knee on knee, in a sense, there. He just pops it up to the top of the goal square. Sherry presented. Couldn't take the mark. And Yellow Team will look to rebound here. Drury and Hardiman. Hardiman almost could have marked it, went with a fist. Trying to work in tandem there with Shields, who came in and applied the tackle. Cade, Cade, of, uh, North players behind the ball. Larkey and uh, Cal Dawson is going at it. A bit of uh, competitive juices firing. They're in the, the goal square at the moment. Those two guys. Charlie, Charlie, Zerha from the stoppage. Literal. Kicks it high towards Larkey and Dawson. Those two as if on cue. Be the yellow team that'll be able to rebound the ball out. Davis involved here. An excellent first season with North's VFL team, the uh, the former Crow. Yellow team doing well to, to move the ball. Link up via hand. Harrop again on the end of it. He goes short. And Simkin are right and made his opponent really try and earn that. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a 
a set shot from directly in front. Yellow team with 10 goals so far in this intra club clash. They've uh, had most of the running, it has to be said, in this quarter. And then another goal to the tally. So it takes their score to 11 10 76. Oh and blue up to. 18-8-116. Other things to sort of watch in particular is uh, is, the, is the midfield and clearance dominance that, that North, North Melbourne, well, dominance is probably too strong, but they certainly improved at the contest last year. They were, in 2022, they were ranked 14th and 18th oh, yeah. in the competition for, for clearance differential and clearance efficiency. That improved to 11th and 8th in 2023. And that's despite Luke Davies, Uniaka, you know, not having a, a full season. George Warlaw not having a, a full season. And Will Phillips really did begin to show good signs towards the back end of last year. You add in the likes of uh, Josh Simkin into the mix. Lazaro's improvement. Warlaw caught holding the ball on that occasion, but you get a, a full season out of him. There's uh, lots to like about that North Melbourne on-ball brigade. George applying the tackle on that occasion. He's a uh, free kick for holding the ball. Lean it to Cal Dawson, who's providing some run. Kick to Lawson. Kick inside 50. Was hoping for Sellers. High tackle. Against Sellers, it looks going to go the way of Harry Sheasel, the 2023 campaign he had, winning the, the Rising Star Award. The Sid Barker yeah, medal, averaging the 27 touches per game. Could not have asked for a more impressive first AFL season from Harry Sheasel. Here's Tom Powell, fourth season with the Roos. He was pick 13 back in, in 2020. It just looked like it really started to click for him last year. And all reports a very good pre-season, particularly in the, the last couple of weeks. Strong Dukes there from Sherry. Now Phillips and Hardiman and Sheasel combine. And some run from Pink from behind. He'll kick inside 50. Coleman Jones presented the option. Larky was there. And it's uh, trickled out of bounds. In terms of areas of improvement for the Kangaroos, well, I suppose just uh, in general, we've heard, you know, both Luke McDonald and Hugh Greenwood talking in Particularly Luke talking about the, the lack of continuity through injury, I suppose, last year was was uh, was very, very frustrating for the playing group and no doubt for, for North fans. And there really has been a changing of the guard from a, a list perspective. I'll be hoping for a, a change of injury luck throughout this season. And as I said, apart from Griffin Logue, most players looking pretty good for round one. Davies Uniak bumped from behind there by George. And George won the ball. He was able to kick towards half forward. McKercher, oh, he's so strong. Harder to think he's only 18 years of age. Ball held to him. McKercher was uh, second in the Lark medal voting last year to, to Riley Sanders, who's making some ways himself at the Western Bulldogs during the offseason. Won the Morris medal for the best player in the, in the Coates League. Spoke to him during the, uh, the draft combine last year, Colin McKercher, and he said that he didn't follow an AFL team. He instead sort of appreciated the game and, and specific players in, in particular. No doubt he was, uh, he's a true blue Roo now. Slotted into this North Melbourne A lineup with a plum. Stevenson on the wing, inside 50, speared it to Larky. He had his arms chopped, so Larky will have a look at the goals. It'll be a tough, it'll be a tough uh, set shot there.
He'll have about 45 metres to cover, but we know how good of a, a kicker goal he is. Jeez, he's had a really good run at that. That's an excellent set shot from Nick Larkin. He kicks his third of the game. He was deadly accurate in, in 2023. Nick Larkin. The, uh, the, the 71 goals. Yeah. This is impressive that he was, he was efficient as well. 71 goals, 24. He was one of the more efficient top goal kickers last season. Played the 23 games, but I suppose promisingly for, for North, for, for a big young key forward, he's been really reliable and durable. Played 22 games in 2021, 20 in 2022, and 23 in 2023. North fans absolutely thrilled that he's on their list. Mailey this time going at it against Sherry. Wardlaw in and under. Taken high this time. Have seen Wardlaw caught holding the ball a, a bit today. So that'll just be interesting to note as he gets just finds the balance between taking opponents on against the uh, distributing. You know how good of a distributor he is. Coming back with courage. It's a, a nice defensive fist there. So we go out of bounds. But big summer for George Wardlaw. Of excitement around him. Just the eight games last year, but looks like a player that can have an impact from round one. Yeah, he's able to get through that in the next couple of weeks okay. Sherry decisively down Zerha was streaming through the stoppage there. Didn't quite come off. He's working his way through there and is caught holding the ball. over 10 minutes remaining in this one as Davies Uniac goes back to Wardlaw. It's normally been Wardlaw to Davies Uniac, this time vice versa. Wardlaw goes on his left and misses everything. And it bounds on the full with the blue team holding a sizable lead here over the yellow team. Having said that, the yellow team have given a great account of themselves. As to be said, a lot of these top-up players have been very, very impressive. Charlie Harrop in particular, an excellent. Sam Lawson, Tyler Sellis. Davis, Louis Butler, and of course uh, Jared Leonard is on staff here at the Kangaroos. Harrop shows it, then swings onto the left. McKercher is there with Sellis. McKercher did well to get it down, and Wardlaw was waiting. Out to Will Dawson. Thumps it forward. Zerha didn't get a great bounce and attacked it with ample intensity. Didn't quite come off for him, but good attack at the ball nonetheless. Sheasel trying to feed Wardlaw. Does feed Wardlaw. And he's getting better as this game goes on as well, Wardlaw. To Sherry, to Hanson. He wanted to feed a teammate in Davies Uniac, and he was able to do that in the end. Davies Uniac snaps and has the legs and the accuracy. And a splattering of applause for Luke Davies Uniac as he kicks his second goal of the game. Missed the nine games last year, Luke Davies Uniac, but we know his absolute potential. In particularly, we saw him really start to come into his own in the back end of 2022. Passing from the mid-season by onwards in 2022. He was outstanding. Paul, the eight Brownlow votes actually in his last seven games of 2022. And then pulled 13 votes from his limited 14 games last year. So he's a, he's a guy that catches the attention of the umpires, but more importantly, he catches the attention of opposition coaches and know how hard he is to stop. Simpkin from the stoppage. Inside 50. Pounced on by Hansen. Gives it to Powell. He swings onto the left and kicks it high. 
Larky got rid of his opponent. Didn't matter in the end. Powell got the lucky bounce and bounces through the goal. Tom Powell kicks his first of the game. Player who's played 45 matches at AFL level across three seasons. Had a good run at AFL level, but you sense he's a player about to go to another level in 2023. 16 goals so far for Tom Powell. His uh, AFL career, but he can add goal kicking to his, uh, his arsenal. It'll be a, uh, a dangerous proposition for rival sides. Sherry decisively down in the ruck from the restart. Phillips and Wardlaw tracking it. Wardlaw is probably stiff there not to win a, a free kick. Phillips comes out to Simkin. Look at Wardlaw just presented at the front of the stoppage that time. Then kick inside 50. George Wardlaw is playing some sort of last quarter here. Some sort of second half in particular. Real eye-catching from him. It was, I reckon, Colby McKercher who really stood out in the first half and it's been... Wardlaw, in terms of the recent draftees of the, of the past couple of years, those two have really caught the eye. So Zerha has been a, a constant presence inside 50 for the blue team today. From directly in front, kicks his fourth. Four for Zerha, three for Larky, and two for Stevens, Davies Uniac. Dersma Stevenson. And for the yellow team, well, three for Cooper Harvey. Two of them came for, while he's on the yellow team. And Harrop as well also has uh, has the two. Kate Delarue, another player that um, was uh, one to watch out for. He's got one goal to his name. Tyler Sellers is the other one. Three goals for him, most of them coming when he was Playing for the blue team, but he's back in yellow at the moment, being opposed to by Toby Pink. Maley back in the ruck for the yellow team. Sherry clearly favoured by the bounce, and I'm going to get the, the, the clearance going here. Phillips getting back out to Sherry, and he thumps it deep inside, 50. And at the back, waiting for it was Zerha. Just fumbled at the wrong time and then followed up with the tackle. And Lena arrives to force a stoppage in a dangerous position here for the yellow team defence. We've seen Zerha be threatening around forward 50 stoppages. Let's keep an eye on him here. He bursts through. Coleman Jones will be doing the ruck work. Here is Zerha lurking. Wardle at the bottom of the pack. Doesn't come to him. Tackle applied. By Powell, no free kick for holding the ball, so we'll have another stoppage. Zerha. Well, if there were three sets of goalposts, he may have been somewhat online, but there's only one. He uh, kicked that out of bounds on the full. Long, thumping left foot kick comes out. It's been plucked by Sherry. Big game from the ruck. Played a lot of minutes. McKercher receives. Checks the kick. Just misfiring with the with that kick, but Wardlaw was so good. Able to feed off the, the hand pass to Cooper Harvey. Larky in the pocket, back towards Harvey. Almost came off. Larky kept on going and kicked the goal. He's a good player. Nick Larky kicks his fourth. Three of them have come in this last quarter. He's ominous. Close to goal. It's a look on replay, though. Harvey and Larky working it out well in the end in that forward pocket. Some pressure coming from Bergman. Despite the pressure, still able to get boot to ball and able to kick the goal. Come to the, the, the bench for a well earned break. It's a 
pat in the back from Damien Monkhurst as well. Monkhurst part of this North Melbourne coaching group. There you can see Zane Derzma. I mentioned beforehand he's got the uh, the top on, so he's uh, he won't be taking any further part in the game. Dylan Stevens as well, not taking any further part in the game from the looks of things there. But Davies, Uniac and Simpkins still powering on here for the blue team out of clearance. Simpkin kicks it inside 50. Intercepted by Jared Lean at the former Port Adelaide and St Kilda player. Kicks it a bit too much juice on it and Lazaro thumbled and Davies, Uniac I'm going to feed the hand pass away to Powell, to Cooper Harvey, who snaps and goals. And that is four goals for Cooper Harvey. So he's just giving the North Melbourne match committee something to think about. We heard from Hugh Greenwood in the third quarter in particular, talking about, well, we know how good Cooper's goal sense is. And we certainly saw that at VFL level last year. But as Hugh said, what, what's he doing when he's not near the goals, is he working up and down the ground? What's he, is he using his aerobic capacity to, to his full extent? And that looks like certainly the, the next level that he has taken over the, um, over the, the, the summer. And we have seen him at times really work hard up the ground and, and present an option at, uh, at half back when, the, when his team's been rebounding from defence. So rewarded with four goals on the scoreboard as well. Yellow team will get the clearance on this occasion. It really has been one-way traffic in the past 10 minutes out of uh, the centre for the blue team. Maley. Inside 50. It was a beautiful kick from Finvar Maley. He's, uh, he's hit a teammate. Basketball background, of course, Finvar Maley. Uh, his sister is Annalie Maley, who is an absolute superstar in Australian basketball. She's with the, playing with the Perth Lynx. She's been part of the Opal setup in recent years. She won the WNBL MVP award a couple of seasons ago. She is a star of, uh, of Aussie hoops. Here's Will Dawson. Just Did he get a legal handball away? Well, the non-controlling umpire, who I think had a, didn't have the best view compared to the controlling umpire who had the best view. You can look for yourself here and replay. No, nope. good call. Good call. That's why we've got uh, the best replay operators in the business working here at uh, the North Melbourne Intra Club. Clearly a, uh, clearly a throw against uh, Will Dawson. So it allows the yellow team to have a set shot from directly in front. That's the 12th goal of the game for the yellow team. So just repeating that uh, North Melbourne in seven days' time will be heading to the AIA Vitality Centre to be taking on Collingwood. That'll be the first match simulation of, uh, of the game, of, of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the uh, summer, I suppose, for uh, the Pies and the, and the Roos. And then... North Melbourne's attention will turn to uh, St Kilda. They'll play at Moorabbin. There's a fair, ch a fair break between the two games for, for North Melbourne. So they'll play at Moorabbin the Sunday before opening round. Which, uh, of course, the, the AFL season kicking off in Sydney between the Swans and the Demons in early March. Phillips kicks it long inside 50. Big fly from behind from Sellers. Be a ball up with uh, Maley and Colvin Jones doing the ruck work. Ball comes to Simpkin, gets his hands free to Zerha on the left, puts it up. Coleman Jones did he get a shove on the back? Umpire said no. Hansen applying the forward pressure, but yellow team able to get it out in the end. And that's going to be a free kick against Will Dawson. There's uh, Alistair Clarkson on screen, watching on. Been looking at him at uh, in the quarter breaks, and he certainly has been doing most of the instructions yeah, with the uh, the blue team as well as the AFL coach. We've heard how he's been delegating quite a fair bit to his uh, 
star started assistant coaching panel during uh, the summer. <laughs> Taking on a few more responsibilities today. Alastair Clarkson, the four-time Premiership coach, arguably the greatest coach of the modern era. And uh, he's at the Kangaroos. Maley, done some really good things around the ground today. Started pretty well on the ruck, but seems to have gotten more confident as the, the game has progressed around, uh, around the ground. Lazaro. Davis who just fumbled and allows Hanson with an opportunity. To Davies Uniac. Stevenson sprinting to his right, instead went longer towards Sellers. And he marks. Oh, he, oh I thought he had it. Just spilt it right at the last moment. So it will be balled up. A lot of tired players out there, hands on knees. Coleman Jones doing the ruck work here. Brings it to ground level. Leaners can rebound, rebound though for the yellow team. Just over two minutes remaining in this one. George was involved. Braden George looks like he really has found a role in as a, as a half back. He's a, a star for the Murray Bush Rangers in his draft year as a as sort of that mid sized forward. Good kick from Bergman inside 50. Miller Bergman, 21 years of age. 12 games last season, Miller Bergman in and out of the side, but looks a, a likely type again off half back. But there's competition for spots. And those rebounding defenders when, you, when you've got Sheasel and McKercha involved as well. Josh Goder has got great versatility in his game. Long kick of goal. Sails through. Jay. Number 13 Jay. for the yellow team. Jay. So 24 8, 152. The blue team to yellow 13 10 88. So final minute and 19 seconds remaining. Here, just some observations in general. George Warlaw has been excellent in this uh, second half, particularly the, the fourth quarter. He just looks rare in a go for round one. Really, really exciting. That is Uniac in cruise control, I think, right throughout the game. He's uh, he's primed for a big one. McKercher, excellent first quarter. Excellent first half in general, I suppose. Really, uh, he's going to be important, particularly with the, the Roos trying to get their ball movement going from the back half. He and Sheasel are going to be so, so important for this this kangaroo set up despite being first and second year players respectively really really important uh, for them for the season toby pink an excellent first quarter sort of really asserted himself as a as a player that could have an impact from from the get-go despite uh coming in as a delisted free agent and being delisted by the swans in 2019 he could have a, a real big impact after a strong sample season same with Callan dawson as well he's uh he really looks like a player that could between him, Combin, and and uh, Pink, it's uh, they're going to have a bit of a conundrum at, at match committee. Do they play all three? And they go with two. There is Pink on cue, who's able to take the intercept mark. Nick Larky looking strong again, uh, and Jaden Stevenson covering the ground really well, and so uh, unselfish with his uh, decision making today, while also able to kick a couple of goals. The yellow team, Cooper Harvey, really impressive. I think, uh, looks like he really has added another string to his bow with his, improving his tank. So he's one to watch as, uh, as a player to keep an eye on. And Will Dawson, uh, he, he won't be he won't uh, be there around one you'd sense, but he's a player of the future for North Melbourne and looks like uh, every bit of a, a first round pick at 201 centimetres. That's full time here at Arden Street Oval. That's uh, the end of the match simulation, this intra club. It's sort of the first, well, the last, sorry, the last hit out of uh, the players having a crack against themselves, against their own teammates. 
And then it gets serious from a little bit more serious from next week. The, they'll face the Pies in match simulation North Melbourne and then they'll take on St Kilda in the Community Series. Then all eyes towards Round 1 in the 2024 home and away season. It was the blue team defeating Yellow 24-8, 152. Yellow 13-10, 88. Four goals for Larky, four goals for Zer Zerhart and four goals for Cooper Harvey. They were the main goal kickers. It's been our pleasure to bring you this broadcast here on the North Melbourne official website. This is our hard-working team signing off. They're uh, just weeks away from round one. Bring on the footy. And goal. Play footy. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. Um, but yeah, obviously you'd love to be out there, but um, not too far away. So you do get a bit of FOMO when the games start yeah. coming around, but it's a very long year. So um, yeah, but it's been some towards the top of the goal square. Lazaro to Larky, who just fumbled momentarily, has support on the outside. I reckon that's Tyler Sellers who's got the ball, and he has been able to snap on the left foot and kick a goal. So Sellers. Able to Dang kick his first of the Dang game, it. as I mentioned before, Henry um, coming through together. Really, really young, really close group, but really uh, competitive with each other. So, um, yeah, they're bringing the best out of each other. It's a beautiful ball movement from the blue. Have a look at the goals. Has kicked a goal so far today. And just able to squeeze that one through as the. Have a look at the goals. Has kicked the goal so far today. And just able to squeeze that one through as the Sellers is the target again. Drury waiting. Has Larky to his left. Big tackle from Pink, but it was an illegal wow. tackle. Uh, the yellow team for this game. In the meantime, Drury plays on, snaps around the body and kicks his first goal of the game. And the blue team on the scoreboard starting to... Yeah, as everyone said, it's been a lean few years, um, but... You know, the only way to change that is actions. There's a lot of words, but we've got to put it on, on the field and um, I feel like I've been, been able to do that so far this summer and she's excited to play genuine opposition. Yeah, God. it's going to be, going to be a, lengthy, uh, a lengthy season now. It's going to be an opening round and gather round. Snap around the body here. Bounces through for a goal for the yellow team. Nah, it's exciting. Wardlaw with the free kick and sends it long inside 50. Big flight. From the side from Sellers. 
35 to 40 metres to cover. Covers it easily. Go on by, doesn't move. So Sellers with his second. Um, got some real stability, which is um, which is just going to benefit us immensely. Allows an opportunity for Harvey to slam it inside. 50 is Lawson. Great pressure from Combin at the last minute. Jump. Just over the head of Wardlaw. One on one here with Taylor. Look at Wardlaw to bump Taylor off the ball and then get straight back to his feet. Feign the hand pass. Swing on the left boot and hit. Almost hit Drury. Almost did everything right. That's uh, on the end of a few things today here for the Kangaroos. To Drury. Centers it to Stevenson. He marks me. So speaking about it in the first, I think you've seen that for a long time. Mm. But um, yeah, he's just he's got that composure and, and that confidence and um, he's been yeah, hasn't missed a beat this preseason. So Yeah, boys who got back yesterday, had a little light flush and here they are. Sellers. Simkin to Sellers. He's run from Hardiman, who's hoping for Maley, who had put his hands to the ball, but then he's uh bounced on on top as the umpire so what, from what you've seen across the, the first two and a bit bit quarters is that Dawson goes up along with Cobb last year he's got all the tools and all the power and the goal sense as well and this time he he puts it uh, he puts it right through and thankfully I, I was able to do all of the pre-season so we've got a pretty good base um, so we'll just keep ticking ticking along the old basketball ankles we've seen a fair bit yeah, so I'm they sure have uh, you know that uh, precise left foot kick that he had at the Swans, and he brings oh, it here to the Roos with a lace down. out pass. Great kick from Dylan Stevens. Those guys from in, from different clubs coming yep. in and showing um, how good their running is. But Disco can turn on a dime too. Uh, so his ability to somehow, oh, I haven't seen him use his right a lot. I'm always <laughs> him about using his right. Because his got... expectations internally certainly will be low. But yep. if Zane Dersma is that kind yeah, of X, right. X factor, as we see some great hands here from Davies Uniac and Lazaro. And Stevenson and Lazaro, great ball movement. Sellers is rewarded and kicks the goal from point blank range. As well as expectations internally certainly will be low, but yeah. if Zane Dersma is that kind yeah, of X, right. X factor, as we see some great hands here from Davies Uniac and Lazaro. And Stevenson and Lazaro, great ball movement. Sellers is rewarded and kicks the goal from point blank range. He got his chance late in the year. He was more than capable, and uh, yeah, to, as you said, took that. Confidence. Oh, it's going to get over. I think that is. That's going to be a oh. goal, is it? To Stevens. I think if we were at AFL level, that'd probably be an arc. You're dominating the but he's constantly board, but in he's match team. He's constantly yeah. been in that first team. Oh yeah, Caldor. Each and every. He's kicked a couple of nice ones too. Oh, that's yeah. a lovely snap. Charlie, I think it is. Yeah. You're dominating the but he's board, constantly but in he's match team. He's constantly yeah. been in that first team. Oh yeah, Caldor. Each and every. He's kicked a couple of nice ones too. Oh, that's a lovely snap. Charlie, I think it is. Yeah, right over the top. Might have a shot here, Stevenson. He's been no, he unselfish won't. today. Unselfish he is. And he almost, uh, almost came off. It was kicked off the ground by Stevens after Taylor dropped the mark. And Stevens sneaks forward for this last quarter. And the yellow team go inside 50. Hardiman is brought down. And he's going to be... And Nelson will send deep inside 50. But Sherry's back in the hole. But it's been marked. That's the team in the Coates Talent League. And there's also skipper of the Halebury Premiership team in the APS as well. So he kicks another goal. Blue team trying to pick it up here at halfback. Just fumbled, though, by McKercher, but he was able to follow up with a tackle. Drury good enough, though, to get it to Lazaro. And he was able to go short and find a teammate. And, well, Sellers was waiting for it. But uh, in the end, he's far for, for many, many years. And Lawson drills it as well. So he gets sense that they believe they are talented enough to start to make inroads up uh, up the ladder. But so much appeal to the recruiters right across the AFL landscape in the level. He sense before getting a crack at at senior level. Here's Nick Larkey. Good look at it here on our screens. And he kicks it beautifully. Trying to pounce it. Comes out to Powell, who feeds the hand pass out to Stevenson. Eyes light up, looks at the goals and drills it. More reward for effort for Jaden Stevenson. Put on a lot of size over in his short time at, at North Melbourne. I remember covering him last year in, in his draft campaign for the, the Gippsland Power. 
high and long inside 50. Nuon was there. It comes to ground, and the yellow team have been able to snap through a nice goal. And he's uh, caught out there. Pink may have been held. No free kick is paid. Comes to Lawson. Feigns it. And did well to bring in a teammate who kicks the goal. So yellow team off to a really good start. Link up via hand. Harrop again on the end of it. He goes short. And Simkin are right and made his opponent really try and earn that. In this intra-club clash. They've uh, had most of the running, it has to be said, in this quarter. And then another goal to the tally. Josh Simkin into the mix. Lazaro is improvement. Wardlaw caught holding the ball on that occasion, but slotted into this North Melbourne A lineup with a plum. Stevenson on the wing, inside 50, speared it to Larky. He had his arms chopped. He'll have about 45 metres to cover, but we know how good of a, a kick a goal he is. Jeez, he's had a really good run at that. That's an excellent set shot from Nick Larky. He kicks his third. As well, Wardlaw to Sherry, to Hanson. He wanted to feed a teammate in Davies Uniac, and he was able to do that in the end. Davies Uniac snaps and has the legs and the accuracy from the stoppage inside 50. Pounced on by Hanson. Gives it to Powell. He swings onto the left and kicks it high. Larky got rid of his opponent. Didn't matter in the end. Powell got the lucky bounce and bounces through the goal. Wardlaw is... Probably stiff there not to win a, a free kick. Phillips comes out to Simkin. Look at Wardlaw just presented at the front of the stoppage that time. Then kick inside 50. George Wardlaw is playing some sort of last quarter here. So Zerha has been a, a constant presence inside 50 for the blue team today. From directly in front, kicks his fourth with, the, with that kick. But Wardlaw was so good. Able to feed off the, the hand pass to Cooper Harvey. Larky in the pocket, back towards Harvey. Almost came off. Larky kept on going and kicked the goal. He's a good player. With that kick, but Wardlaw was so good. Able to feed off the, the hand pass to Cooper Harvey. Larky in the pocket, back towards Harvey. Almost came off. Larky kept on going and kicked the goal. He's a good player. Kicks had a bit too much juice on it, and Lazaro thumbled, and Davies Uniac. I'm going to feed the hand pass away to Powell, to Cooper Harvey, who snaps and goals. Award a couple of seasons ago. She is a star of, uh, of Aussie hoops. Here's Will Dawson. Just Did he get a legal handball away? Will Dawson. So it allows the yellow team to have a set shot from directly in front. That's the 12th goal of the game. Star for the Murray Bush Rangers in his draft year as, a, as sort of that mid-size forward. Good kick from Bergman inside 50. Miller Berg. Josh Goder has got great versatility in his game. Long kick a goal. Sails through. Right. 13 for the yellow team.